Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, our December regular uh, Board of Commissioners meeting. It's also the budget meeting. Uh, we did have uh, a 7 o'clock uh, meet, meeting, but the stenographer could not be here, so we had to move it to 8 o'clock. So we'll be starting the meeting, stopping at 8 o'clock, going through the public hearing for Pamir Road, and then continuing the agenda. And the public hearing will be, 30, will be <coughs> held to 30 minutes. So now we'll start with the roll call. Gamelia is here. I see him. I saw him in the back, back room. Yeah. Uh, Mrs. Hall. Here. Mr. Siegel. Here. Mr. Holmes. He's in the back. Uh, Mr. McGarity. Here. Mr. Connell. Here. Mr. Wexler. Here. Mr. Heilman. Here. And Mr. Early. Thank you. Thank you. Here. All right. Uh, we have <coughs> the opening prayer by Reverend so Tim Johansson of Temper Lutheran Church. <coughs> Also happen to be the uh, president of the Haverford Township Ministerium, and uh, so I especially want to thank everyone who came to our interfaith Thanksgiving service the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and uh, Mr. Holmes for representing the commissioners for that. Let's pray. Stir up your power, Lord God, and be present among us. God, we invite you into all that we do this evening. May your glory shine through us. We thank you that you have made us for the sake of living together and caring for one another. We thank you for the gift of community. Inspire us to use that gift solely for the sake of being a blessing to others. We thank you for the work of our commissioners, and we ask that you give them a spirit of wisdom and truth. We thank you for the work of our police officers and our firefighters. And though in other parts of this country there is diminished trust in the ones who have, sworn, who have been sworn to protect us, we thank you for the peace that we have in this township. Bless them mm -hmm. as they continue to work for the public good. We pray for those preparing for their respective holiday seasons. May this season be one that inspires joy and shines a light into even the darkest of hearts. We especially pray for the 1,500 plus people in this township living in poverty. People who we often pretend don't matter or even exist. God, inspire us to love and serve all people, especially those who can't take care of themselves. As we prepare to discuss and finalize the township budget, Lord, give us a spirit of generosity and abundance. Help us to move past politics and exclusively into service, because we have unity whenever we are gathered in your name. Lord, you are the only one we owe any favors to. And the only contract that we ever have to consider is the covenant that you made with our founding fathers. That you will provide abundantly as long as we do justice, love kindness, <clears throat> and walk humbly with you. Bless us as we move forward together, united in love and leading only with the most noble of intentions. To you alone be the glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, I just wanted to <coughs> mention that the board met in executive session prior to the meeting on a legal matter. We'll start with proclamation. Mr. Okay. McGarity. Okay. 
Yes, thank you. I have the honor and privilege, privilege tonight to present at the Coco family, who have been down on Brookline Boulevard with the St. Jude shop for 50 years. They are here tonight celebrating their 50th year on the boulevard, whereas the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, takes great pleasure in recognizing sufficient achievements and milestones of businesses located in our community. And whereas the Board of Directors and the Board, and the board of Commissioners wish to honor and congratulate Brookline Boulevard's very own St. Jude Shop, the, the Coco family, on their 50th anniversary. And whereas in 1965, Lewis and Norma DeCoco founded the St. Jude Shop and opened the first retail store in Haverford Township. Almost five decades later, the DeCoco family's original shop on Brookline Boulevard is the largest religious goods and church supply retailer in the United States of America. Wow. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania wishes that the Coco family continue blessings as you face all your new endeavors. Proclaimed this eighth day of December, 2014, by the Haverford Township Board of Commissioners, President Mary Oliva, Vice President Jeff Fireman, Steve D'Amelio, First Ward, Jane Hall, Third Ward, Dean Sigel, Fourth Ward, Larry Holmes, Sixth Ward, myself, Seventh Ward, Chris Connell, Eighth Ward, and Bill Wexler, Ninth Ward, with the help of our township manager, Larry Gentilly. I just want to say that the Cocos moved in back in the days when we had the Ardmore trolley running up Darby Road. And there was many and many a shop that's not in Brookline any longer, and that the Cocos are one of the few survivors that are still there. Not that anything was wrong. People got older, they retired, but the Cocos have stayed around. And believe me, I remember that when it was Martell's. It was a super, it was a great super, uh, it was great, great Scott. Scott. Martell's, it also at one time was an AMP. That's what I'm trying to say. Now it's super fresh. That's an AMP. I remember all those days back in there, and there's only one other family, and that's Jesse the Barber that's around the corner. He's been around there for, I think, over 70 years. I mean, he even has me beat. I'll tell you that on the boulevard. But uh, we did the Cocos like to come up, and we'll get some snapshots. Yeah, we have somebody Facing out, so there's a picture here. Yeah. Put mom right in the middle. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, Sophia should get up there. Come on. Sophia DeCoco. That's it. Yeah, that's the next generation. She's a great kid. Yeah, she looks like us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Well, thank thank you very much for this honor. Thank you for we are uh, humbled. And uh, we appreciate um, all the uh, of being here. We 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 truly um, Haverford Township was was has been very has always been uh, the place that we've always uh, felt we should be, um, and it's uh, it's proven that it's it, we've grown with it. And uh, as we uh, changed and developed, uh, it's always been great to know that uh, the township has been be behind us and. Uh, with all of our endeavors and all of our works, um, we we have different retail stores throughout the country, and our, our uh, the family is uh, all of uh, I'm honored to, with uh, my mother 
and dad started the business with all of uh, my brothers and sister and um, so it is uh, it's great to, again to share each day to, to come in every day and of course where we grew up is uh, where we work so it's uh, it's always been a great uh, place so absolutely yeah yep thank you We've been very fortunate that, through the grace of God, we've been able to make contact and a deep uh, ex expression of faith throughout the world, not only in uh, Haverford Township. And uh, Lewis can uh, attune, yeah, attune to that. Absolutely. And we're very fortunate that uh, we've had such support from the township. And uh, for this, we're grateful. Thank you. And I'm sure next year you'll hear a little about the Dukokos and the Saint and the Saint Jude shop when uh, we get our big visit from. Because uh, <laughs> I know they'll be very involved in that, like they were last time. Yep. Okay. Yes. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. And I just want to add one more thing. The Dakotas also give back to the community. They have, um, especially uh, Judy has been involved, and the family as well, in Haverford Township Day. Every single year from its very first beginning. They have always supported it. They've uh, put up uh, some of the rides there in front of the store. Judy <coughs> has gone around to send out oh, notices and the, the food and everything. So the, the family has always paid back to the community as well. So. Terrific family. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. All right. Now we have our township auditor update. Good evening, everyone. I've reviewed the disbursements for the period commencing November 11th, 2014, and ending December 8th. 2014. I raised eight questions. Each of those questions were answered to my satisfaction. So in my opinion, there were no irregularities for the period in question. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. <clears throat> we'll start with the uh, citizens forum. Um, registered speakers. We will begin with um, Dr. Levin. I uh, want to keep it to three minutes. We have a very long agenda this evening, so we want to keep, and a lot of people want to talk, so please keep it to three I can minutes. I keep it short this evening uh, because I don't have a great deal of the data yet. However, I sent you on the internet uh, via um, Mr. Gentile uh, a 10 to 13 page uh, pricey on what I am looking at. First of all, a solution to the Woodmere Park area should not create additional problems. Um, I'm in the unusual position of it is potentially going to create an unusual problem for me, uh, for my property, uh, so I take a personal interest in this. Um, the Township Engineer presented a six-page proposal. I went through that proposal rather carefully and also through the neighborhood. Um, the costs for the corrective measures should be definable. They are not definable at this point. They are only generally stated. The watershed and sub-watershed, which I've given you a diagram of uh, by Pannoni on the first page, <coughs> On the second page uh, of this document, you'll find uh, the page from the soil survey of 1958, which uh, defines the uh, area as being well built at that time. What I am not finding in the engineer's report is any focus on other existing underground utilities, particularly those that are associated with sewer water. Um, I also do not find anything uh, concerning the flows, uh, particularly what is known as the rational formula uh, for computing them, as well as uh, the Manning formula, uh, which determines not only what the water is, but how it goes through the pipes. 
So I don't find any calculations, and I've asked repeatedly for these, and I don't receive them. <coughs> uh, my belief is that affected and concerned parties are going to come forward. I am not making any effort uh, to sign up people. <coughs> I believe that once they realize that this project in the middle of Mill Road or on the side of Mill Road is going to create water problems within their own properties, that or could, uh, they will uh, they will agree uh, that this is more than they want to handle. While I realize that this is a public right of way, and you can do anything you want in it within reason, there is also an <coughs> easement that you have with a sewer going down through Woodmere Park that could be corrected uh, and it could be added to. So it is unclear to <coughs> me. It is unclear to me whether the township is going to receive those data and a detailed report. If there are any questions that you have regarding the, uh, regarding the write-up that I sent you uh, <coughs> through Mr. Gentile, please contact me and I'm willing to make it available uh, to residents uh, who will write in to me uh, over the internet. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Andrew Smith. Andrea E. Smith, 102 Land of Road. I know that you all have a very long agenda tonight, so in light of that, we will limit our comments from my group to only two people, myself and another person, as I know you have a very long night. <coughs> Um, in the past, I've given you supplementals regarding 101 Tembi, and this evening I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to show you the inverse <coughs> of the deed restriction at the <coughs> property and a little less reading. Um, today, if you look at um, the supplemental that I've given you, it shows two separate deeds, and it's the exact opposite of what is stated at 101 Tembi. This is important because it specifically shows that Charles S. Taylor, the original owner of these lots, and the person who enacted the deed restriction and the covenant um, in our community wanted to specifically show his intent on each property and each lot. And in this case, he crossed out one home and he said one, excuse me, one per lot. So his intent is very clear as opposed to the deeds that you would find for 101 Tembi. In this case, he wanted to show that per each lot, he meant one home, which again is the inverse of 101 Tembi where he clearly states if you recall the last supplemental I had given you, it's one home per the property. Mm -hmm. So here you see the inverse of his intent, and I think it spe speaks to the fact that Lanark was a planned community and how much care and thought was put into <coughs> every single deed. And I think it's really important to see the opposite when it exists and um, to show his actual handwriting and to show how it was crossed out and what he meant. And I wanted to thank you for your time. All right. Next, uh, Linda Nessler. <coughs> Hi, my name is Linda Nessler, and I live at 29 Tenby Road. Can you hear? Am I okay? Yeah. yeah. I am here to speak about the effects of the demolition of an extremely large home in the close proximity to its neighboring homes. Specifically, I'm speaking of 101 Tenby Road, but I am also referring to the demolition of another larger home on Park Road almost two years ago. On December 2nd, the demolition <coughs> of 101 Tenby Road began. Now it's December 8th, and for the past seven days, it has been hell living across the street from it. There has been constant traffic to the point that cars and trucks have to pull in their mirrors just to get by. The dust control was done by one small hose that looked completely ineffective and at times wasn't used at all. It did not seem like anyone was monitoring that effect. The only help we had was on, from the rain. On Saturday, the air was thick and smelled like wet wood. <coughs> we can only imagine what chemicals were spread across our neighborhood. Also on Saturday, they ran over my curb and dog walk. Mr. Fuller 
told us that it's not my property, so I should not be concerned. On Friday night, a smoke detector was going off all night in the rubble, and the security guard in a white truck parked across the street kept us awake running his truck on and off, periodically stepping out and slamming his door. He then walks around smoking. We don't know what else is going on while we are trying to sleep. Also, they have a bright light on every night and it keeps us awake. It has been very difficult to get out of our driveway because their people were parking too close to us. I never thought I would feel so unprotected in my own home. The township can and should revise the requirements for a demolition <coughs> permit and, for, and the township can and should spell out the best practice procedures for taking down a house. Also, the health concerns that demolition creates have to be considered and evaluated. Taking down a home of this age and of this size is completely different than taking down a two-bedroom ranch built in 1985. The township does not do any assessment, which I'm aware of, in regards to the scope or impact of each permit request. Certainly the size, age, and configuration of the house should be assessed as part of the permit approved approval. As of now, none of this information None of this info is required. I don't even know if the township is required to see a house prior to demolition. I feel like we are not being protected as residents of Lanark. I don't understand why there's a security guard at night idling his truck from nine at night to seven in the morning. Isn't it uncomfortable to think that we have a total stranger outside of our house all hours of the night? Maybe they should have put up a big, a big <coughs> fence instead. In summary, we look in summary, we look to the township for their continued support. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and that's everyone for 101? Mm -hmm. Okie doke. Uh, now on agenda <coughs> items. <coughs> sure. Um, we'll start on this side. Anyone want to speak on agenda items? Oh, go ahead. Come on up. Lizzie, 236 Washington Avenue. Before you finalize the budget this evening, I just want to take a step back for the $30 million that you're going to vote on for the bonds. It combines the combination of the police and the administration in the library building. I'm taken back to think that on March 10th, there was a building put forth for four stories on the corner of Darby and Manoa Road, estimated out to be $18 million from the Properties Committee. In June 2nd, Pannoni's Associates actually had seven options presented. Option one was for $23 million. As of September 8th, I don't know how it happened, but option one became a $30 million project. At March 10th's meeting, the Properties Committee Chairman, Commissioner Siegel, stated that the last thing anybody wanted to see, any project with the property <coughs> Committee involved, is a cost overrun. $18 million to 30 is a $12 million difference. And $23 million to 30 is a $7 million difference. I do believe that is a cost overrun. As I sat in the building on September 8th, and when you came back from the back room, it was very obvious to anybody sitting in this room that the decision was already done before the public vote. That is my public opinion. I am entitled to it. And I am sure that a few of the commissioners will state that they are going to be offended by that comment. Well, I'm just as offended that you insult the intelligence of Haverford Township residents. I cannot believe an $18 million project in March and a $23 million project in June becomes a $30 million project tonight. Commissioner Holden comes out and he literally <coughs> demands $500,000 of your tax dollars for immediate repairs for a building you support over a million dollars a year for the past five years. And we also increase the library. I question it. I don't understand it. Why all of a sudden option 3B was allowed to be presented at the time of the vote? That was definitely a done deal. Commissioner Wexler voted for option 3B. I asked at a meeting whether or not if it was a viable option, should it be presented to the Haverford Township residents? I was told by Commissioner Wexler that it is a Bogosian product project, not a Haverford Township, and it could only questions should be asked to Mr. Bogosian 
but all of a sudden at the time of the public vote, you are allowed to be presented with option 3B. I'm going to move on to the question on the EMS preliminary budget figure for this evening also. Last year we had $922,600 in wages. Since we no longer have paramedics or EMTs employed with Haverford Township, I did notice this evening that there is a $171,686 for a full-time paramedic. I just want to know if that's a typo, because we don't have paramedics or EMTs anymore with Haverford Township being employed. We have the University of Penn taking care of it. Just as a side note to the residents of Haverford Township, I did have to use the emergency staff. They were very professional. The officer that came to my home was very compassionate and helpful. Unfortunately, four times they stated I could go to the University of Penn when I have three hospitals in my backyard. I don't know where this is located on the budget, but the median strips on Westchester Pike are maintained by landscapers, mostly on the weekends. I do not believe that they're employees of Haverford Township because I'm sure that would be taken during the week work during the week. <coughs> Who pays for the workers maintaining the median strips? How much is it costing the township? Why doesn't our ground crews maintain them? And since Westchester Pike is a state highway, how are we being reimbursed? Or more importantly, how did they get the job over the men who work in our township? Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else on this side? On, on agenda items only. This side, first row. Second row, third row, fourth row. <clears throat> Good evening, uh, my name is Greg Eager. I live at 324 Campbell Avenue. Uh, first, I want to take this opportunity to thank the commissioners. I realize the role that they have can be a challenging one, and I appreciate the, the work that they do. Um, I also understand that agenda is uh, quite full tonight, uh, this evening, so I'll try to keep my comments as concise as possible. <coughs> um, I briefly commented on the proposed ordinance number P16214 at the Board of Commissioners work session last Monday, 12-1. The ordinance proposes a number of zoning updates and corrections. Uh, an item of particular interest was the rezoning of the Grime Center from institutional to R4 or R6. Uh, for informational purposes, R4 uh, would limit the development of the property to single family homes. R6 uh, could allow the development of single family homes, twins or duplex homes, or possible uh, triplex or quadruplex homes if the Grime Center lot is large enough to accommodate such a structure. Um, I strongly believe that the original recommendation of the Planning Commission for R4 zoning is correct. <coughs> Current needs of the neighborhood should be the determining factor regarding the zoning designation of this property. R4 zoning would help minimize the traffic, offset parking, excuse me, off street parking and stormwater management concerns that the development of the Grime Center property will create. In addition, it will help maintain the current look and feel of the neighborhood as an overwhelming, overwhelming majority <coughs> of the surrounding properties are currently single family homes. No. I appreciate your time this evening and hope you found my comments and thoughts on the proposed ordinance persuasive. In addition, I'd welcome the opportunity to discuss these concerns in greater detail if necessary. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? There being no one else, we can yeah. answer some of the questions. Right. Well, the ones on, uh, you want to talk about the paramedics? Yeah, I can talk about the paramedics. Why don't you take care of that? Yep. Um, <coughs> actually, uh, relating to the bond, I know there was a, there was a couple questions uh, relating to the paramedic and uh, that would have an impact on the budget. Uh, township staff utilizing the work on, uh, on the medial strips. The, the budget, that's uh, incorrect, um, <coughs> Sir Lizzie, the the, the, uh, we actually have two full-time paramedics that are still retained. That's part of the program. We actually have two, uh, our director and our assistant director remained as employees, and that was always a part of the, um, the proposal that was initiated and presented to this board and passed by this board, and that's the salaries that you see there. There was still um, a net savings to the township. I don't have it in front of me now, but I believe it was somewhere just shy of 40, 479,000 dollars. Yeah. So that the salaries that you <coughs> see 
are for two employees that still are on the township's um, payroll. With respect to uh, the Westchester Pike, we uh, eliminated, you would see in the 2015 uh, budget, you'll see in park maintenance, park recreation, we have a significant reduction in staff. It's one of the um, positions that the township has tried to take. That we've eliminated a lot of the workforce. Uh, we receive a stipend from uh, PennDOT each year to maintain um, the, the roadways uh, that are state roads within Haverford Township, mostly salting and plowing things. Um, two of those, some of that stifling goes to two particular projects. That would be the grass and, and cutting of the roadways on Darby Road and Westchester Pike. Um, we felt one of the uh, positions that, that I felt uh, and my staff at some of the management meetings that we can actually do a better job um, and put more into that uh, by uh, contracting that work out. Uh, that was put through the township's uh, union, township association staff. Um, they felt that they could actually put more of their effort into the park maintenance, and therefore we uh, bid it that work out, and there's two separate projects that we bid it out. That was the grass cutting on Westchester Pike, and that's also the grass cutting at the Grange. Those particular areas were, were, were bid it out, they're bid it out, every two years, or actually not bid it out, they're quoted out. And that's, uh, that's the money that goes into the budget to pay for that. But majority of that money is offset by funds that we receive in, specifically for Westchester Pike by PennDOT. Um, so the, that actually was put, put by the township staff. The township staff uh, did approve that, and therefore most of the, the additional uh, workforce, you can put their efforts towards doing better park maintenance, so on and so forth. Um, and regarding the 30 million, I can touch on that uh, just just a little bit. The they're all that 30 million that the, the township is doing is not all towards uh, the municipal service building. Uh, some of that you can see in the first 10 million that we did, I believe approximately three and a half million, if I'm not mistaken, is yes. towards <laughs> sanitary and storm sword and flooding improvements. Um, and you'll see as we do the next. A uh, 10 million and a third 10 million, but not all of the 30 million will go towards the municipal building. And and we had the <coughs> we had the maintenance building also. It was and part the, of that. That's correct. The maintenance building. The, the vehicle maintenance made. building. Correct. So. Okay. And if you have any specific questions, I'm always available. Um, in my office, I can help you out with some of the other ones regarding the EMS. So okay, thank you. Okay. And uh, Lori, would you like to come up and discuss 101 10B? To the demolition. Demolition, please. Uh, with respect to the demolition, Haverford Township has a specific policy for the demolition of buildings. Requires uh, the submission of a permit application, a certification from a pest control agency to make sure that termites and rodents are abated if there is a problem so that it doesn't spread to the neighbors. Additionally, an inspection report to certify that no hazardous materials are located in the building is required to be submitted. Um, on top of which, there is also a certification uh, from my office that uh, the, the structure is not located on the township's historic resource survey. So there are a number of items um, that are required, um, uh, the disconnect of gas, electric, capping the sanitary sewer, all of those things have to be done in advance of demolition. And I will say that the Codes Enforcement Office did respond to several complaints <coughs> about dust during the demolition. Uh, ironically, most of the complaints came while, while it was raining, but uh, Joe Celia and even Doc, um, uh, Richard Doherty, the Public Works Director, responded to calls uh, for dust and found no evidence of dust that was creating a public nuisance uh, on the surrounding properties. Okay. If they have an issue with uh, idling engines during all yeah, night long, was the police department that. Right. can yes. handle that, right? Yeah. And I was going to say, I, I spoke, I didn't spoke through email. I talked to, um, to Dale and I made him aware that the police are aware of the issue and that they will, if you hear something or, or there's something that is going on, that they would come, the police will come out and take care <coughs> Okay? That they are aware of the issue. 
Now, <coughs> moving on, you want to start the um, public hearing? Yes, we need to. What's that? Because it might not be real fast. You want to knock off the budget? Okay, we can do that. There's no changes. I mean, that's the good news. So unless somebody's got a filibuster, I think we can go through this pretty quickly. I don't know. Demilio's looking filibustery over there. Yeah, well, he ate too many <coughs> Reese's. I think he's going to pass just, out I'm halfway during it. I'm just kidding, Steve. <coughs> too many uh, Reese's. All right, we'll go through. If you want to quickly go through that, and then we'll sure. If I could, Mr. President. Yes. Um, I would. Uh, <coughs> move that we adopt the 2015 uh, final budget. Um, I have a report from our township. Uh, I think I need a second. I need a second. Was that? Oh, yeah. oh, second. All right. Um, I have a report from our finance director explaining the differences between the preliminary and the final. Um, the, uh, the only changes are in our, in our general fund, there is a $183,000 change uh, on total revenues and then a corresponding $183,000 change on total <coughs> expenditure. Um, those numbers are made up of changes to account for the final debt service figures on the 2014 general obligation debt issue, medical insurance buyback, um, increased overtime and related payroll taxes for snow removal, um, a slight increase in real estate revenues uh, after receiving formal assessment notification from the Delaware County Board of Assessment. But most important, and this is about 90% of the change, um, an appropriation to purchase a sanitation truck, which we expected to do in the end of 14, won't happen until January of 2015. So that's about 165,000 of the $183,000 change between the preliminary and the final. Um, those are the only changes. Um, other than that, uh, we will be, um, uh, we will have a <coughs> increase in the real estate tax millage from 7334 to 7.540. Uh, the median property assessment of $143,335 uh, will result in a township tax bill increasing from $1,051 to approximately $1,081. Um, we are uh, seeking an increase in the sewer rate um, of 20 cents per thousand gallons uh, of water consumed. Uh, and that's from $4.50 to $4.70. And our trash fee remains at $194 per residential unit, which people remember from previous meetings as well as the last meeting in previous years. That is a trash fee that is significantly less than the cost of our trash removal and significantly less than our neighboring townships uh, around us who have numbers in the $200 and $300 range. Um, it is my recommendation that this board adopt the final budget um, as changed, and um, uh, I defer to our, our uh, finance director or our township manager any questions uh, anybody may have. Otherwise, I recommend that we adopt it. All right. Motion made. Seconded. Second. Oh, it was already done. Oh, was it? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? No. Uh, Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? No. Uh, Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Heilman? Yes. And Mr. Oliva? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and thank you to our <coughs> staff um, for their uh, fine professional work on this uh, uh, on this budget. You want to do the you trash? You have to do the other two. Yeah, the do the trash other two. Oh, fee there we have it. Well, I still appreciate their help. Um, ordinance <coughs> number P23-2014. <coughs> Adopt the final reading of uh, P23-2014, authorizing the imposition of an annual sewer rate in the amount of $4.70 per thousand gallons of water consumed. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? No. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? No. Uh, Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Heilman? Yes. Mr. Oliva. Yes. Mr. Okay. President. Commissioner. Mr. President, I move uh, that we adopt the final reading of Ordinance P24-2014, <coughs> establishing the annual trash fee of $194 per residential unit. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Wait, wait, I do. I just have a quick okay. question. We've uh, been very aggressive in trying to get many of our residents to continue uh, or to actually um, <coughs> cycle. Mm -hmm. How's that, how's that coming? And if, if we get more residents to do that, would this go down in 
this trash fee? Or I don't see this trash fee ever going down, but it certainly would help help it from going up. It won't uh, go we've, up. We've made some very pretty aggressive uh, changes in the way we we do business. And for example, I just received just today, and again, this is a it's a, a slow time of year for um, our curbside um, yard waste collections. Not too many communities not only in Delaware County, but throughout the Commonwealth, actually do a curbside collection of yard waste. Mm. We've implemented that. That's had a positive impact. Uh, this particular month, our, our trash disposal fee went down to yet another $1,000. It's been averaging anywhere from 7000 to 4000 so it varies, but we're actually saving money there. So these type of uh, programs that we offer the community uh, to, to, to get the trash stream to go down, that's where we save money. And again, not to, to bring up the history, but a number of years ago when our all <laughs> municipal trash went to the county incinerator, um, that was free. The county implemented a fee, which was an, over a million dollar, close to a million dollar impact today if we didn't have the single stream recycling and the yard waste and some of the other programs that we would do. We would be paying well over a million dollars a year. So, uh, yes, recycling, if we can get the residents, the, the recycling numbers, you've heard me say it um, over the last few months, we're, we're, we're getting things in the newsletters, we're trying to get the word out. Uh, that will continue to help us keep the trash fee low. 100, 197, um, 194. Not $194 a household. I, I know my daughter lives in West Town. She pays well over $500 a year, and they have a private hauler. Um, I would challenge any community to come close to those numbers. Yeah, it's, I understand. I'm just wondering if I, I'm trying to help here. If they, yes, you know, absolutely educate them Our, that if we continue we to the, improve the, on the recycling, right. this won't go up. It correct. will not go up. All right. Correct. And this is it. Didn't go up this year. All right. All right. <clears throat> any more discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? No. Uh, Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Uh, yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Heilman? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Are we stopping trash collection in the first ward then? No. <laughs> All right. That's. Okay. <laughs> Let's President. <laughs> That's, uh, I just bring to the fifth word. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> Good. We we recycle there. Please, we we have to get moving. Uh, clearly. Um, so um, <laughs> tax, if I may, uh, move that we adopt ordinance twenty seven forty of des of uh, two thousand fourteen. <coughs> um, this is a first reading, but uh, it it acts as a final reading, uh, and it is to fix our uh, tax rate for the year two thousand fifteen at seven point five four zero mills. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? As I indicated, that is um, uh, that is the uh, the final millage that um, our finance director came to in uh, evaluating the 2015 budget. And um, uh, as I indicated, the the median tax bill um, that's not the average tax bill. It's the bill that 50% uh, uh, of the households in Haverford Township pay or pay less than uh, will reflect about a $30 increase. Uh, in the median assessment. Um, $30 a year. $30 a year, yes. Um, and so I recommend that we adopt it. Okay. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? No. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? No. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Heilman? Yes. And Mr. Oliva? Yes. And finally, Mr. President, uh, finally, we need to adopt, uh, and I ask, I move that we adopt Ordinance 2741 of 2014, appropriating the funds established required for the specified purpose of financing our municipal government for the year 2015, including all taxes, fees, service charges, and other revenue sources provided within all the funds. This is a first reading and an only reading. Okay. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? No. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Heilman? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Now we're moving on to the public hearing. President, thank you. Suspend. Uh, 
Yes. Commissioner Siegel. Yes. Uh, as I stated before, I have a conflict in this matter. I have a statement, and I'll, if I can be excused until Thank the you. next part of the meeting. Yes, sir. You okay. most certainly can. Thank you. All right, we have that letter. It's uh, marked December 1st, 2014, and we'll. Um, uh, attach that as part of the record. I guess we should, could, should mark that uh, Siegel 1. Okay. Jim, okay. the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Williams is here, I see, tonight, right? Yeah. And um, I think as we left off on this last time, um, you had presented us with a, a good deal of evidence, and um, some members of the public had also had an opportunity to present some evidence and some comments. Um, there was uh, a person or two or a, or a township that also wanted to add some uh, information and we agreed that it was an important issue and we would leave the record open um, until actually till last week and then we had a little bit of a problem to, and continued it till this week. So um, I guess the best, the most orderly way to do this, uh, Dr. Williams, because I know you had some other stuff you'd like to add too, uh, is to turn it over to you and, and, and ask if you have anything you want to add at this point. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Byrne. Uh, I, I would like to, uh, uh, John Williams, 730 Panmure Road. A little, a little bit like a host of a TV show here, but. Um, and, and you were sworn in at the last hearing, I right? was. Okay, so you remain sworn in tonight, okay. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. um, what I wanted to do uh, tonight is, is just briefly review uh, some of what we talked about before, because it's a very complicated legal matter. And uh, we'll do that briefly and, uh, and then ask the board to uh, make a finding uh, in this case. Um, there, was a, there was a document, uh, question and answers around the 700 block of Panmure Road that um, I asked to be admitted as evidence and to be provided to the commissioners. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's, uh, if that's occurred or not. Well, I think that it, uh, I, I think it has been sent to the commissioners. I don't. Uh, I, I know that it hasn't been marked yet, so we should do that now. Um, I have a copy of it here somewhere. Could you just make sure that's what you're referring to? Um, uh, yes, Mr. Byrne, that is correct. Okay. Assuming all the, the pages are here, uh, let me just... Yes, that, that, is, uh, that is correct. Okay, and thank you. Um, I don't recall what exhibit number we're up to. Do you, by any chance, the court reporter? No? Okay. Okay, that, so the last exhibit number was A6, so we'll mark that as A7. She wasn't the last meeting. And I believe that the commissioner's got a copy of that. Uh, and I, I took the liberty of making some additional copies in case anyone um, else that has, is participating in this hearing wants a copy of it. I'm certainly welcome to pass that around now if anybody wants a copy of that. Nobody? Okay. All right. You want to uh, just pass a couple of them out there? There's a couple hands that went up. Well, I will, um, I will uh, try to go through this as quickly as possible, but again, want to do proper due to the complexity of this. Uh, just to summarize, uh, Panmure Road uh, was created as a private road that's shown as such in uh, township documents uh, from 1916. In, uh, in June 5th of 1916, a uh, resolution was passed uh, indicating, uh, if you will, a sense from the board that uh, they would consider and act upon an ordinance providing for the taking over and adoption of the said Panmere Avenue as a public road. They say this uh, in a petition in the filing of the resolution with the Court of Quarter Sessions on June 29th, 1916. Again, that they would act upon an ordinance uh, in accordance with law. It's very clear from this statement that they felt that for the actual taking over to occur, that there had to be the ordinance. There had to be that ordinance. The resolution was not enough. Um, so that's sort of the, kind of the first point I wanted to, to make. Uh, 
The law of the time, which has already been admitted as evidence, the act of June 7, 1901, showed that the power was given to enact ordinances, ordaining, surveying, laying out, widening, straightening, vacating, laying all roads. Not resolutions, ordinances. They had to pass an ordinance. Fortunately, all they did was pass, uh, or fortunately, depending on your view, all they did was pass the resolution, and they did not pass the ordinance. Now, again, as, as we talked about before, why did they not pass the ordinance? Well, we, we can't know for sure, but it is likely that the, the amount of money that was needed to, to conduct the so-called first paving of the road was not raised. And, and the general, if you, if you study this, if you study the minutes as I have from that time, roads were not accepted unless they were paved because the township didn't want to be sort of put on the hook for this. Um, now, how, how were roads accepted at, at, at that time? They were accepted by dedication or by ordinance. Now, if there was a dedication, then the township owned it. That's how Martin Avenue was taken over. Uh, they, they gave it, Haverford Township bought it for a dollar. In this case, there were just resolutions because they owned it. They didn't need to take anything over. They bought it or they were given it. When there was merely, when there wasn't actually a deed of dedication that occurred, there had to be an ordinance. Ordinance number 66 for Ralston Avenue shows that following a petition to the Court of Quarter Sessions, it was accepted, adopted, and ordained as a public highway. There was an ordinance a mere six <coughs> months before this whole Panmure issue came up. It clearly shows that the way that uh, Horatio Gates Lloyd and the other, uh, your predecessors did this is that they passed an ordinance. That's the way they had to do it. A resolution, again, was not enough unless there was a deed of dedication. And as we talked about last time, why is it that maybe they ran out of money or they couldn't get enough money? Because the paving cost went up by 100% and then it was forgotten about. And, they, and the township commissioners in 1917 stopped taking over private roads. That is in the minutes from, from that year. Now, a gentleman last time, I don't know if he's here tonight, he mentioned that there was probably an implied dedication. What, what is an implied dedication? Well. That is, for example, if, you know, Art South Ardmore Park or some of the other places you see from that time on the old maps, they carved out streets and lots and they numbered the lots. They said, you will have lot number one. And there's precedent going back 100 years that says that that meant an implied dedication. If you, if you sold houses according to lots, that was an implied dedication. That did not happen with Panmure. This was a one-off development uh, that was a uh, one guy sold, uh, you know, uh, developed some properties. There was never a plan filed. There's no developmental plan. There are no, there's no numbering of lots. There, so that, so there clearly is no implied dedication. If we look at the law here, there has to actually be some sign that the owners wanted to dedicate their land for some reason. There is absolutely nothing. Okay. Now. Moving on to, sorry, I keep hitting that microphone there. I apologize for that. Um, we're about halfway through here. I'll try to keep going quickly through this. So the whole idea is some people might say that, well, the public has used it. They've used it. Now, there, the whole concept of adverse possession and prescriptive easements is an extremely complicated one. Maybe it would be found that there is a prescriptive easement. But that could not accrue to the public. It could accrue to specific people. And as for reasons we'll say in a little bit, it could never create a public road in this particular case. Maintaining a road in a first class township by the town, you know, a township maintaining that road, it has nothing to do with the legal status. I know it would seem to make sense that if the township maintains a road in a first class township, they would take it over. The law is actually not that. It is in a second class township, but not in a first class township. The, the other point, though, is to have an adverse possession exist, there has to be the ability for the people who own the land to defend against that. There is absolutely no indication that they could have ever defended against it because it was presented at some point as being a public road. The, the most important issue, though, that we'll see is that if the public has used it, if there was any easement, it is just to the width of the cartway, 
which is 18 feet. A road in a first-class township can never be less than 24 feet, as we'll talk about in a second. Now, when, when did the township first consider itself to be the owner of the 700 block? There is no indication that they considered themselves to be the owner before 1964. There is only a five-year period, as for the first-class township code, to open up a, a road, as a public road. Five years. That would have expired in either 1921 or five years after the first-class township code in 1936. There was a private sewer underneath the street until 1999. The, apparently, the owners of the sewer, the Preston Drainage District, attempted to have the township take over that sewer in the 30s. They refused. They did not take over that sewer. The sewer was privately held until 1999, which suggests the private character of that road until quite recently. Um, the road was never opened on the ground at 30 feet. Uh, my deeds, the, the chain of title going back to the original creation of my parcel and some of the others on the street, there's no mention of the width at all. It's like a driveway. So it was not opened. It's never been 30 feet. It's been 18 feet the whole time. Now, regarding this, this width thing here, uh, the First Class Township Code, Section... 2012, but in no case shall any public street be less than 24 feet in width. Now, <clears throat> people say, oh, we see streets that are less than that in the width. You see cartways that are less than that because they've been opened through the appropriate legal channel. And so there is a right of way, which is at least 24 feet. There is no right of way here. The right of way, to the extent that it exists because of public user, is 18 feet. And easements don't, they don't expand. They, 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 it's, the law is very clear here. They are limited to where they have actually occurred and been used. Now, why doesn't the township just pass an ordinance right now to take it over? They can. You can do that. You can pass an ordinance right now to complete the process. But there's the question of whether the five years has expired. And there's also the question of compensation for the land which is being taken from the owners. And, you know, that, that's, I, I think that's kind of the, I think that's sort of the, the you know, the main part of this. Um, so I, I think what I'd like, I'd like to do it, I, I'd like to ask the commissioners tonight either to vacate the street, to find that it is not a public street, or to, to, to compensate us for taking over the street, <laughs> you know. Which is your right to do, as <coughs> clearly in the law. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, <coughs> just so we're, our record's clear, we have exhibits A, 1 through 7 that you had submitted, and, and we'll accept all those documents. Uh, are you, yeah, sure, I'm sorry. You have a question? Uh, um, Dr. Williams, may I just ask you just a couple of questions? Sure. Is that okay? And this yeah. is not like a Examine no, it's fine, it's fine, you can. Okay. All I'm trying to do is ask you uh, about the utilities that are located on Pamir Road. Um, there's sanitary sewer. Yes, the, the sanitary sewer was dedicated to Haverford Township effective January 1st of 1999. It was, pre previous to this, it was part of something called the Preston Drainage District. It was a private sewer that was created actually in, in 1905 through a special legislative arrangement with Lower Marion and Philadelphia actually, where area that approximately from Old Buck to Buck to Railroad, it, it drains into the Lower Marion system. That was specifically dedicated, the sewer was specifically dedicated to Haverford Township effective January 1st, 1999. Okay, and do you know what easement rights were um, conveyed with the ownership and maintenance of the sanitary sewer system? Um, presumably, access to that. I mean, that that would you know that would make perfect perfect sense. I, I uh, you know I, I know that it was conveyed. I have I have attempted to actually secure the the deeds, but I I haven't I haven't been able to find them. But the the point is is that. Um, you know, that was a pub, you know, that was a privately held sewer uh, 
within the last 15 years. So, I mean, that would have been 15 years ago. So, um, from, you know, from now. Okay, let me then ask, well, when it was a privately held utility, mm -hmm. when it was a privately operated utility, right. what, if, if Pamir Road and some of the other streets were private roads, what easements were obtained for the construction of the sanitary sewer in 1906? But there are no easements mentioned in any of the deeds. So the presumably it would be, I'll defer to Mr. Byrne on this, an easement by implication, but none of the deeds, and I've, I've researched the, the chain of titles on uh, each of the properties, have any mention of, a, um, of an easement for a sewer. Can you, um, can you just tell the commissioners what other utilities are located on Pamir Road? Is there water? Presumably, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, that, is there no, just, it's, it's a sort of a complicated question, though, because half of Pamir Road is actually served from Old Buck. So if, if you look at, for example, the, um, you know, the utilities for the, uh, I guess, the northern side of Panmure are, are all actually are not served from Panmure. There's no, there are no telephone wires, that, uh, all of that, the, uh, the sewer drains into Old Buck. Those are served from Old Buck. The only question is for the three properties who are on the southern, that are on the southern side. And yes, there are, you know, there are clearly some uh, utilities there. Aqua repaved the street um, five to ten years ago, and so that's correct. Okay, so, so, and I'm, again, I'm just trying to find out sure. what utilities yeah. are there. So there's, there's sanitary sewer, right. there's, there's water there to serve at least one half of the right. residents. There's a, an electric line? The electric line um, goes, again, it's, it's uh, they're, they're for 700 and, or, um, yeah, 700 and then 720. And, and our property is actually served from, from Old Buck, the electric. Okay, and, and what of those easements? Sorry? You, have you discovered any information about the easements for any of those other utilities? The cable TV, the electric, right. the water lines, the sewer? Right. Tr so traditionally, the way that this is handled when you have a utility is there's what's known as an easement by implication. So it's typically not written as, you know, it's not, it's, it's like any other, you know, any other private road, right? I mean, you, you know, you go under Lower Marion, you sort of see them all over the place. Um, it, you know, there's, and they, they dig them up. For example, they, you know, on Glenwyn Road, uh, they just dug that up and they replaced a, a water line. And, um, but, but the, the presence of those utilities uh, in the cartway does not, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't change the, you know, the ownership status of them. Okay, just because, so my question really is yeah. not, it's just try, I'm trying to find out whether or not you had whether you've come across. There are no any easements on any of the deeds. On any of the there easements. are no easements on any of the deeds. <clears throat> All right. Um, no, there are also okay. street lights too. Yeah, right. I'm sure yeah. there are street lights and there, <coughs> road street signs. Lights. Son, we have to be careful. We're not talking on top of each other because okay. unlike normal road normal signs normal conversation as well. Reporter can't get wait wait one sec because the court reporter has to be able to take it okay. all down. Okay. Okay, good, Jeff. I'm sorry. We have road signs. We have road signs now, and no parking signs. That's correct. Okay. As of October 12, 1964, the township. We have evidence that was the first evidence that the township had accepted the road. Of course, that was long after potentially its window to do so may have closed. For the, what's the 21 years? Is it of five years open? Five years. These are, these are things, I mean, in terms of, just so everybody has an idea of what we're doing here. I mean, this is a hearing um, in, in this capacity of the board sitting as a quasi-judicial board. Um, when we close the record, you'll have an opportunity to meet with me in executive session and ask me any questions you might want. Um, I don't know that we would be serving any purpose to for you to be calling out questions to me at this time and me to be giving answers that might not be right until I've researched them. Um, 
so I, I think it's better to, to to save those types of questions for me until okay. until we meet in an executive okay. session. Um, after that time, I mean, all the deliberations would have to be done in public, and and there would be a public vote um, as to you know how we're going to d dispose of this um, matter. But okay. but um, um, have the traffic studies been done? Um, was I Yes. Yeah. Chance over there. No, I'm sorry, sir. Could you just get up uh, again? Yes. We have a court reporter here, so we have to identify who you are. And uh... Uh, my question was about the traffic studies. Yes, the traffic yes. studies have been done, Commissioner. Okay. Okay. And, and sir, just for the record, identify you, yourself, please. Name and address. Uh, Sergeant Sean Pedrosian with uh, Haverford Township Police, 1010 Darby Road, Havertown, Pennsylvania. B is in boy, E D R O S S I is in Ida, A Adam, and Nancy. And and uh, Sergeant, you were sworn in the last time as well, right? No, sir, I was not. You were not. Okay, we should probably have you sworn in then. Okay, if we could. I do. Okay, and the answers that you just gave us a minute ago would they be truthful to pursuant to that earth oath that you just made? The question is, as far as conducting a traffic study, anything that you testified to tonight was true, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. We have a little. Uh, if, just again, to keep people so we don't don't think we're, you know, we're going crazy up here. But we have a, a different court reporter than we did the other night, so we're trying to make sure that the people that are testifying are identified, and we can get it all. Out. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions of the sergeant? Well, I think the sergeant is go through the traffic study that he performed. Yes. Oh, he does. Okay, yes. good. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Thank you. Um, the uh, Hanford Township Police Department uh, did conduct a traffic study in the 700 block of Panmure Road. Um, we began this study on November 6th um, at 1,300 hours and ended it November 13th at 1,200 hours. Uh, on the 700 block of Panya Road. Uh, this roadway in itself is not physically divided and the speed limit on this roadway is 25 miles per hour. We did the study using JMR radar recorder utilizing the TaxPro software and uh, compiled data of speed and volume for each direction of travel and combined. <coughs> the results from this study um, showed that during this time period uh, 4,480 vehicles uh, traveled on that roadway. The directional breakdown uh, for this, um, for the vehicles traveling from Lancaster to Buck was 2,604. From Buck to Lancaster on Panmure was 1,876. The peak volume of traffic during, this, during the AM hours occurred between 0,800 and 0,900 hours, and the PM occurred uh, between 15 and 1,700 hours which are the traditional times of uh, commutes, travel, uh, traffic commutes. Uh, the speed results from our study uh, indicated that 85% of the vehicles that traveled in the 700 block of Panier Road traveled at a speed of 27 miles per hour or below. The average speed was 24 miles per hour. Um, the study here showed that less than 1% of the vehicles that traveled on the roadway during this period uh, traveled above the enforceable speed limit, indicating to us that uh, the, need for the need for enforcement uh, activity was low. I also uh, conducted a crash uh, study, um, a crash data, which was analyzed for the five-year period from 2010 to 2014 on a 700 block of Panier Road. And during this time, two reported crashes were documented by the Haverford Township Police neither of which were speed related. Uh, in my study, I did uh, observe um, some issues at the site, uh, which included fences and shrubs along the roadway edges. At the southeast corner of Panmure and Buck were trees and shrubs, and the southwest corner were trees and a stone wall fence. At the northeast corner of Panmure and Old Buck, were tall bushes and a fence. My opinion, these obstacles minimize the slight triangle at the intersections and are a safety concern for motorists. So that was the study that I conducted uh, for the 700 block of Panmure Road. During that same time, 
I also conducted studies, um, uh, again, during the time period of November 6th and November 13th in the 500 block uh, of Old Buck. Again, using the same radar recording equipment and the TaxPro software. Again, that roadway is a two-way roadway, not physically divided. Speed limit on that roadway is 25 miles per hour. Um, during that time period, 3,577 vehicles uh, traveled on that roadway. Directional breakdown, Lancaster Avenue to Buck was 2,087 vehicles, and from Buck to Lancaster one, was 1,490 vehicles. Peak of travel again during the AM, AM hours was 0,700 to 0,800 hours, and the PM occurred between 16 and 1,700 hours. Speed results in the study <coughs> indicated that 85% of the vehicles that traveled in the 500 block of Old Buck traveled at a speed of 25 miles per hour or lower. The average <coughs> speed on that roadway was 20 miles per hour. Again, this showed less than 1% of the vehicles that traveled on this roadway during the study period traveled above the enforceable speed limit, indicating the need for enforcement activity to be low. Crash data analyzed uh, during the five-year period, five period from 2010 to 2014 uh, documented no reported crashes. Again, some safety issues that were identified at the site, okay, trees and shrubs again along the road, road's edge. At the southwest corner of Old Buck and Buck were trees and shrubs. Southwest corner of Old Buck and Panmuir were tall bushes and fences. Excuse me, a tall bushes and a fence. Again, these obstacles minimize the site triangle at the intersection are a safety concern for motorists. The last study that I did in that area was the 900 block of Buck Lane. Um, again, using the same JMR radar recorder um, uh, equipment and also the TaxPro software. Um, there we did a study between the dates of November 13. 2014 at 1,300 hours and ended it 2000, November 20th, 2014 at 1,000 hours. Excuse me, Sean. And the reason for that was that you have two, you only have two. Um, Commissioner, I have two recorders. So recorders, I right. Two recorders simultaneously during that time period. And once I was completed with one of those recorders, I moved it over to the 900 block of Buck Lane. Okay, thank you. Okay, again, uh, 900 block of Buck Lane is a two-way roadway, not physically divided. Speed uh, limit on that roadway is 25 miles per hour. During our study period, 7,353 vehicles traveled on that roadway. Uh, the breakdown for direction was from Panmuir Road to Old Buck was 2,415. From Old Buck to Panmuir Road was 4,938. The peak volume of traffic in the AM occurred between 0800 and 0900 hours, and in the PM it occurred between 1500 and 1700 hours. Speed results from that traffic study showed that 85% of the vehicles that traveled in the 900 block of Buck Lane traveled at a speed of 22 miles per hour or below. The average travel speed on that roadway was 19 miles per hour. Studies showed again less than 1% of the vehicles that traveled on that roadway during the study period traveled above the enforceable speed limit, indicating the need for enforcement activity low. Crash data analyzed during the five-year period from 2010 to 2014 uh, showed no reported crashes documented by the Hereford Township Police Department. Safety issues that were observed by me um, identified uh, trees and shrubs along the road, road's edge, also, the southwest corner of Old Buck and Buck, Old Buck Road and Buck Lane were trees and shrubs, and at the southeast corner of Panmure and Buck Lane were trees and shrubs. Shrubs. These obstacles minimize the sight triangle at the intersection and are a safety concern for motorists. That concludes my traffic study for those three roadways. Okay. <coughs> Any questions for the board? Um. I would ask, uh, the, uh, number one, is it broken down by day? How many trips? Or do you have it that broken down that way? I have it in my work study. Okay. Um, again, how it is in each day and the peak hours of volume. Okay. 
try and speeds during that but time. I'd be more interested in the day thing because I think one of the one of the qualifications for speed humps is trips per day mm -hmm. so did any of the days um, reach the I think it's a thousand trips per day in the guidelines in one, in one direction, right? oh is that one direction I think it's one direction it's right? one direction a thousand one direction yes but that's during a seven day period right so all every day would have to average that so it obviously yes. wouldn't meet that yeah as far as 4, goes on, the, right. on the panmure road on panmure road as far as the volume goes um we never went over a thousand um in each direction during that seven okay. day period. yeah i didn't realize it was by each direction also yes. so yeah each direction so well yeah. i think i think one of the things that study points out to us uh, a lot less going uh, toward Lancaster Avenue than away and I think part of the reason is something's got to be done at that intersection at Lancaster which I know will petition uh, PennDOT numerous times to get a light there because there's been people hit there there's been uh, m multiple accidents and it's I think people just don't like going that way and that's why there's a lot less trips going that way also uh, part of it might also be the Lexus dealership the people coming down and going through the neighborhoods for the correct you know, for the Lexus dealership for we the also, drive we also have Harford school uh, which travels on that roadway but um, the hours didn't kind of jive with the school times did they they did um, I thought they didn't specifically on Buck Lane they always traveled from like I said 1300 out uh, 1500 hours to 1700 is 13 uh, 1500 okay. 3 p.m. right which would be when school is out okay okay and of course the, the activities that the students have um, you know, after school, that can that can right. play a factor. And in the morning hours, it was either from seven to nine or eight to nine in the morning, which okay. would be their arrival time. Okay. Give me one Okay. Any, any other questions? No, that's all I have right now. Dr. Williams, you had a couple of questions. Sergeant, um, if, if I may just ask you a, a couple of questions here. Uh, the uh, the 85th percentile speed uh, on Panmure uh, versus Old Buck. Uh, and versus 900 bucks. Could you just repeat that to compare them? Sure. Um, again, the combined speeds that I have on Panmure Road during that time period of my study uh, was at 27 miles per hour. Okay. Um, and that's the 85 percentile on Old Buck was uh, 25 miles per hour. And the 900 block of Buck Lane was 22 miles an hour. So, so, uh, so, on the 700 block of Panier Road, what was the, was the fastest 80, 80, uh, fifth percentile speed? Again, the speed limit being 25 miles per hour. Um, again, the 85 percentile was 27 miles per hour, which would be 27 miles per hour less. Now, um, I'd like to call the board's attention to uh, the uh, Article 11, uh, Section 17576, Schedule 1 for speed limits in the Haverford Code. Um, Panmure Road between uh, Wild Goss Lane and Buck Lane, uh, which is interesting because Old Buck Lane has not been called Wild Goss Lane since the 1966, I believe, um, when, uh, well, it was a while ago, <laughs> is 15 miles an hour. That is an ordinance that was passed by this board. And for those who are students of PennDOT and traffic regulations, uh, speed limits were standardized in 1976 in the state law that was passed, effective 1977. However, ordinances that were passed before then are considered to be effective. So right now we have a situation where on Panya Road from Wild Gus Lane to Buck Lane, we have a t we have violating the speed by 12 miles an hour. On okay, let, let me let me let me let me let me, let me let me do this if we could, um, because we you know what I wanted to do is give you an opportunity to ask the sergeant questions. Okay, and you, and it seems like you you're you've come to the end of asking questions. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Okay, so so then I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is see if, the, if there's any other members of the public. Um, not so much to ask the sergeant questions. You can have a seat now, sergeant. If, uh, but if there's any other people in the public that want to come up, uh, I know the last time you had commented, you don't need to say everything. 
um, that you said at the last hearing. I mean, we have the, we have the transcript. It's a 180 pages or so, so we all have that, and, and uh, so we don't need a repeat, but we do want to open the floor for anybody that um, has anything different that they want to add. Uh, on the left, please. I'm going to get you to identify yourself again. Uh, Dr. John Devine from 727 Panmure. Okay, and Dr. Devine, you were sworn last time? Yes. I okay, was, yeah. so you remain under oath, okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's both a comment and a question, and that is to draw everyone's attention to not just the speed limit as it's now posted on the Haverford Township code, code site that Panmure Road is 15 miles per hour. Um, but also to draw people's attention to the posted speed limit sign that's on Old Buck Lane, formerly Wild Goss. The speed limit is on a big sign. It says 15 miles per hour. Also on Buck Lane, there's a big sign posted. It says 15 miles per hour. Um, so I just want to draw everyone's attention to that. And again, thank you for, for, the, uh, for, for having this. Okay, thank you. Okay, anyone else on the left side of the room? Nobody, no indications or anyone else on the left side of the room. On the right side of the room, I, I see a, um, there was a, the, uh, if we go from the front to the back, we'll do that, okay? The young lady in, in, the, in the pink. Stephanie Mahoney, and I'm at 731 Panier Road. And do we have you sworn in? No. no. Okay, we're going to need to do that, okay? Last time. Okay. I do. Go ahead, man. Um, I live at 731 Panier Road. We are the home that is on the curve um, that has the hedge. And uh, I've lived there personally for 18 years, um, married to my husband, John. And my husband and his family had lived there previously. They, we, we, and Mohani's owned the home for 42 years. So in that time, in those 42 years, the road has always been... Um, public. Uh, it's always been traveled on. It's been taken care of with snow plows, everything else. I can't speak before night for 42 years, but um, in that period of time it has been. Uh, the first we heard of the proposal to vacate the road was when we received the notice of the hearing for October regarding this. Um, and I just wanted to state that uh, my husband and I are very much opposed um, to the vacation of this road. Um, we don't personally want the responsibility, the liability, or the expense that this would impose against us. And um, I also feel that for the community, it isn't the best thing. Um, the other thing that confuses me is really our home, a portion of our home would be on a private road and a portion of our road would be on a public road, our property would be on a public road because the way this proposal is, it's drawing it kind of right on the corner of that curve, and our property goes around that whole curve. Um, and in our opinion, uh, we feel that there's actually less traffic on these roads, especially since um, the Haverford School moved their main entrance from uh, Old Buck, or from Buck over onto um, the side road. Uh, and just as a comment regarding our concerns about the one-way couplet, the way it was presented to us, there would be no um, driving on Panmure Road coming from Lancaster Avenue going towards Buck Lane, that that would be um, like a do not enter. So the same concerns that the community have about accessibility um, and getting into the rest of the community by using Panmure Road, that would uh, be the same case um, the way it was proposed to us. Okay, thank you. Sir? Thank you very much. My name is Paul Rogers. I live at 701 Pamir Road. Okay, and Mr. Rogers, were you sworn in the last time? I was. Okay, then you remain under oath, okay? Thank you. R O G E R S. And I want to ask a question of uh, Sergeant Bedrosian. Um, if I recall, and we can refer to the record from last week, the last previous study was done in 2004 6, I think. And six, Sergeant, I believe it was. Yeah, and Sergeant Scott pointed out that there were a total of 961, the same average that you used, 
And on now, on Pamela, you said 4,600. 4, so that's an increase of 378%. So that seems to be, and thank you, by the way, for studying the traffic in four different areas, because that's what we all asked. We think there's more traffic, and I think that proves the point. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Did you have something you wanted to answer, sir? You had to I come up to the <coughs> mic, okay? Mr. Rogers, I, I believe that, again, I, I took over this study um, this from Sergeant Scott, and the 2006 study that was mentioned by Sergeant Scott, I believe that was done in the 500 block of Panmure Road, not in the 700 block of Panmure Road. No. No. It's a different location um, where that study was. Okay. I did check with uh, Sergeant Scott in reference to that. And prior to they said that it was in the uh, 500 block, which would be along where the field is between Railroad and Buck Lane. And that's where that came from. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, Sergeant. Okay, and is that it on this side? Okay, uh, we're, we're, the hands are going up now that I didn't see before. Uh, in the front here, please. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you again to to remember that if you know if these are comments that we heard, to please keep them to a minimum because we do have the rest of a meeting we have to yes. conduct here tonight. So, uh, John Lynch, 527 Old Buck Road. And I just had a question to the board. Um, and I'm sorry, were you sworn in? Yes, yes sir. He was. Yes, you are. Okay. A uh, question: Why? Uh, some here are allowed to present, produce new do, new evidence, and then others are not, such as the uh, traffic study coming in this time, but not the last time. I'm not sure I understand the question. I'm sorry. Yeah, we had the hearing prior. We had uh, Dr. Williams' testimony. Right. And then his evidence that he presented. And then at this hearing, he gets to add additional evidence, new evidence, and other people do not. Well, I don't think anybody's been precluded from adding any evidence. I mean, we certainly want to get all the evidence we can because we want to make an informed decision. So if you have something you want to add, please do it now. I thought it was just new stuff that, you know, people had to come up to. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're going to ask you to get you sworn in, please. Yes, thank you, Anu. Um, and do we get your name? Yes, my name is Thomas Reese. Uh, I live at 911 Black Rock Road in Lower Marion, but I am here for the Mainline Arts Center, 746 Panmure. I am chairman of the board of uh, the Arts Center. Uh, I also am an attorney. I'm a former township solicitor in Upper Marion and Abington. I just want to supplement what we said last time, which Mr. Umbrick delivered for us last time with one comment. I see in Mr. Williams's very thorough summary that he says the township would still collect trash. It would just need to be placed in the public right of way on Old Buck Lane. Buck Lane or the remaining non-vacated stub of the 700 block. That. Uh, want me to reread that? Yeah. Yep. The township would still collect trash. It would just need to be placed in the public right of way on Old Buck Lane, Buck Lane, or the remaining non vacated stub of the 700 block. And I would just say uh, that in addition to what we have said before in opposition to the vacation of Panmere Road, I've never heard of a situation where you could place trash on a neighboring property rather than in front of your own property. And certainly we would be opposed at the Art Center, and I can't speak for the person at 731 Panmere Road, but I think she would be opposed to having people bring their trash down the street and place it in front of our property. That's really all I have to say. We can't have people calling out, okay? Please. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay. Is that one more in the back? Okay. Ellen Evans, 836 Buck Lane, and I was sworn in last time. Um, I just wanted to um, question the logic of vacating a portion of uh, Panmure Road. If the theory is that the entire road was private, how can you only vacate a portion of it? Wouldn't you have to vacate the entire Panmure Road? And I don't think most people here would want to have the 500 block of Panmure vacated as well and be made a public road. So I think that's a consideration. It's either all or none. 
And also, so there's a logic issue, there's an impracticality issue, not only the trash issue that was just mentioned, but also if you're only vacating a portion of the 500 block and there's a stub that's uh, public, I don't understand how, how that would be, the signage would happen, would cars come in, see it's public, private, turn, there's no place to turn around and come off the, the road. There's an impracticality aspect to it. And if the main issue of why we're here is safety, <laughs> We learned last time that there were numerous other ways of, of ad addressing safety, such as you have the, le the leeway to put in speed humps. There are certain guidances for what, when you could put a speed hump that didn't limit you, that you had to meet those guidelines, as well as other calming measures. So it's illogical, it's impractical, and there are other ways of addressing the main concern, which is safety. So clearly, in my mind, uh, there is no basis for um, vacating Pendulum. Okay, thank you. Okay, one last comment. Okay. Well, you're a suspicious looking character, so we want to make sure we swear you. Are. Yeah. <laughs> I do. My name is Tom Karamanico. That's C A R A M A N I C O. I live at 848 Buck Lane, which is about a couple hundred feet from the corner of Panmure and Buck. I'm also the clerk of the school committee, which is what Quakers call the chair of the board of the Friends School Haverford, which is immediately across the street from my house. Um, I don't understand or need to know the details of the legal issues as to whether it's private or it's not. I trust that, you know, the, the legal issues will be resolved and, and so on. It, to the extent that the issue is about safety, traffic safety, safety for pedestrians, safety for people who live there, we are myself as a resident and as the, the chair of the Board of Friends School Haverford, completely in support of anything that can be done that would uh, provide for pedestrian safety, enhance it in any way. I don't know that making the street private is the only answer to that. I think there are any number of other things. I'm an engineer, I'm the president of a company. We do a lot of traffic studies. Uh, it seems to me that for every rule that says you can't do this or you can't do that, there's an exception. Um, and I think there are good traffic engineers who um, can help to make that, uh, those kinds of determinations to make sure that not only the 700 block of Panmuir is as safe as it can be, but also Buck Lane uh, in the block where, where I live and uh, the rest of Panmuir. I think all of those streets need to be considered um, and we would support anything that would be useful to make traffic safety enhanced on all of those streets. Uh, we don't presume to know the answers, uh, but we would support anything and be willing to help in any way um, to uh, make sure that that happens for the benefit of the people who live on Panmure, <coughs> the benefit of the rest of the people that live on those streets and drive through there. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay, I think that we're going to have to close the record tonight. I mean, okay. we, uh, we have to get to the rest of the well, meeting. One, one thing I would like to ask, would it be possible to... Um, get Pononis to come up with some other ideas other than uh, speed bumps if we can't support them with the data uh, and possibly have a meeting with the residents of Panmuir, Obuck, Buck, that area and try to see if we can come up with some other idea other than, you know, the, uh, the speed humps. And also, I still want to, you know, pursue that one-way couplet as well with Laura Murray. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess the, <laughs> that's a <clears throat> multiple questions there in there. And, and, and my thoughts are, you know, as always, always and try to encourage people to see if they can resolve their differences so that a decision doesn't have to be made not only by this board, but by any court, because when a decision is made by a court or a board, you know, you kind of lose control yourself. So if you can come to a resolution yourselves, that's wonderful. Uh, the one thing we have to be a little bit careful of, Commissioner, is that you're one of the persons that's right. charged with deciding this now, so I don't know that you want to be involved in that yourself. Right. It's more, but if, um, you know, somebody else from, if Mr. Pannoni has some suggestions or Mr. Caramonico had suggested, and certainly if all the neighbors get together and, and you know, could write I, me a letter and say... Could I facilitate a meeting and not attend? Uh, what do you mean by getting a room or setting it up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you. I mean, I think you could do that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Or 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 we could figure out something. We could have a meeting here if they, if that if need be. Right. Okay. I, I'm I'm sorry.
I don't know what the question well, it was. Oh, about, it was okay. about the posted speed limits yeah. on Old Buck okay. and Buck being 15 okay. and Pamier being 25, even okay. though the ordinance says. Well, we're not going to answer the question, but yeah. if the sergeant can answer right. it, I'll, I'll let him answer it. All of the, in the traffic report, it said that the speed limits on all those roads was 25. Yeah. Okay. But the, but the website but, says 15. Okay. But it, but it is, it's posted 25 on, on um, Panmure, isn't it? No? Sorry, sorry, everybody has to listen to me for a minute, okay? Because what, what happens is the court reporter can't take any of this down and it doesn't make sense, okay? So <coughs> th that's why I'm, I'm going to Payne's and, and asking you to come up and talk up here, okay? So we, we have your question now, all right? So what, I want you to just stay there and not say anything else, okay? And then Sergeant... You, you answer the question if you understand yes, it or able to. I believe I understand your question, sir. It's in reference to, first of all, in my report in the studies, I never stated the word posted, okay? I said the speed limit on that roadway is 25 miles per hour because the 25 miles per hour is what we are permitted to enforce in the state of, in, in the state of Pennsylvania. So that's where the 25 comes from. Anything below 25 miles an hour, unless it's a school zone, we cannot enforce. Okay, now, does that answer your question, Dr. Devine? Do you, you need to come up here and ask anything else? Or? You're welcome to if you want to come up. Come on up. So you're, so you're on the television. I and mean, we want you on here. That's all. <coughs> Again, thank you. The, uh, you can imagine living on that road and looking at the website and seeing that the law for Haverford Township says that the speed limit is 15 miles per hour and then to be walking my dog or my, my eight-year-old on the street, and it's a very narrow street. It's, it's the size of a driveway. So to have a car going by me at 30 miles an hour um, is very, really distressing. And so I don't understand why that, I don't understand why the officers, who I have great regard for, by the way, uh, cannot enforce either what's on the township code or what the sign that is posted on that road says. It says it's 15 miles per hour. And, and, and it's great, it's a, it's a huge concern for us on that street. Okay, so, thank you, I understand. And, and I, I just want somebody to tell me why they can't enforce that. Well, you can, you can talk to the officer later about that, okay? Because that's really, I mean, although the issue's out and, it, and it's, we understand the issue with respect to this case, but it's really not an issue that, that we're going to make a part of this case, okay? Yeah, just Very quickly, okay, because we're really running out of time. I'm getting, I'm getting uh, on the hook here. To Mr. Heilman's... We're, uh, we're on borrowed time. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, to Mr. Heilman's question, um, I think that meeting has already occurred from the petitions for the one-way couplet that were generated a year ago. We have greater than 80% support on both Old Buck and the 700 block of Pamure for the one-way couplet idea. One-way couplet with permit parking on the street would eradicate the speeding problem or flexible people. The final point I'd like to make, I'd like to ask Mr. Byrne to research the point, if an ordinance for speed was passed before 1977, is it enforceable? I believe that it is. Thank you. Okay, and with that, oh, I'm sorry. Just a quick question, what was that meeting? That you just we we uh, we obtained peti we petitioned people in the fall of 2013, and the petitions have they've been submitted to uh, to Lori, and they can be resubmitted if you don't still have them. Right, we we do, but but my point was not necessarily just the one way couplet meeting or whatever. It was to go over other traffic calming measures other than speed humps and that was my main point I did point out that yes I would like to I would rather see the one-way couplet than the road vacated or the road you know dedicated or whatever my preference is the one-way couplet understood and if that can't happen and the other can't happen I'd like to see some kind of speed um, you know restrict or not restrictions but speed calming traffic calming measures is what I wanted to do but if you don't want to have a meeting with that we don't we won't Okay, let, let me okay. let me uh, I mean, let me just let me just yeah, stop I'm it now because trying to help. okay, everybody, let's stop now, and we're going to um, what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to close the hearing for tonight, okay, and uh, we uh, encourage you all to keep talking. If somebody comes to us with a solution, that's great. If you don't, we'll make a decision when we have to. We have uh, probably over 300 pages by the time we get tonight. Um, 
transcribe to review as well as a lot of legal research that, I, that I'm looking at and we'll have to share um, what I know with the com commissioners as well so it's a lot of work so we always welcome a, a, a settlement if that can if that can happen if not I guess we would put this back on the agenda I'm looking for guidance from you mr. The, chairman as to the next commissioners meeting yeah. wouldn't it be January 12th. January 12th. Okay, so <clears throat> it would, the next meeting would be January 12th. Um, 7 o'clock or 7.30. Uh, we haven't decided yet. We, there hasn't been a decision on the 7 or 7.30. It could okay. be either one. Okay. Um, w well, let, uh, let's play it safe then and say 7 o'clock, okay? That way, we, if, we're, if people are here early, they won't miss it. Uh, seven, at 7 o'clock. January 12th at 7 o'clock. Okay? Miss and, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, and Thank I you. just want to make, can I make a, just a yeah, you can, point. you're the boss, you can do whatever you okay. and, and that this is, yeah, before we close the hearing, that this is about whether we, the township took this property or didn't take that property. It's not about, I know everybody, the, the reason is traffic and, and we get into a lot of that, but the decision that is in front of the Board of Commissioners is whether that property is, is the township's it's public or it's private. That's what's in front of us. And that's a decision that we have to make. That's all I'm, I'm trying to say. I know we got off on different things here, but I just wanted to focus on that's the decision in front of the Board of Commissioners. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone for coming. Thank you. Okay, that closes the hearing. And we are on to the agenda. Okay. All right. Would you like me to get Commissioner Siegel? Yeah. Yeah. Well, is there anything any we need to no, uh, vote on before let's he comes take five minutes. Let's, let's go. go. Okay, let's go. 7.30. <laughs> All right. Yeah, exactly. Chairman. Let's go ahead. Make a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of November 10th, 2014, special budget meeting minutes of November 17th, 2014, and the special storm order meeting of November 19th, 2014. Second. Motion made and seconded. Yeah. Any discussion? No. Please call the roll. D. Emilio? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Uh, Mr. McGarry? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Heilman? Yes. And Mr. Olive? Yes. Number seven, approval of warrants. Mr. President. Commissioner. Mr. President, I move we uh, approve the following warrant, warrant number 12 of 2014, totaling $7,310,000. $578.46, comprising the general and sewer fund payroll for November 6, 2014, in the amount of $761,364.53. The general and sewer fund payroll for November 20, 2014, in the amount of $612,953.74. General fund disbursements number 12 of 2014, in the amount of $4,151,571.30. Sewer fund disbursements number 12 of 2014, in the amount of $535,734.98. Community Development Block Grant Fund Disbursement Number 12 of 2014 in the amount of $114,236.48. Capital Project Fund Disbursement 12 of 2014 in the amount of $648,134.67. Mary Place Fund Disbursement Number 12 of 2014 in the amount of $35. Scheduled debt service on series 2010 ACH due December 1, 2014 in the amount of $480,381.25 and a credit card statement ending November 6, 2014 in the amount of $6,166.51. Second. Mr. Motion. President, our township auditor has been through these warrants. Um, the questions, I believe he said eight of them. Uh, were raised with our township finance director and they were answered to his satisfaction uh, and I recommend that we approve these warrants. Okay. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. DiMeo? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Heilman? Yes. Mr. Lee. Yes. Number eight. Um, uh, could we, uh, could we actually... 
Did Mr. Do you, oh, yeah, chair, do we want to try to move CVS up since they're here with a lawyer? And yeah, that's what is that's, that that's the next item. This yeah. is it. Huh? Oh, is, uh, I thought it was all the way down at 17. Come on, come on. Well, we got two. There's two things. We two. have the number 17 also. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the second reading of ordinance number P15-2014, amending the general laws of the Township of Haverford Chapter 182 okay. zoning, Section 105 zoning map, to rezone a portion of the Delaware County tax parcel number 22-09-01843-00 and commonly known as 1315 Northup Road, Havertown, PA from R4 low to medium density residential district to C3 general commercial district. Second. Motion made and seconded. Again, well, this is a second reading. We discussed this. Yeah, we, discuss, we discussed this at the, um, at the previous meeting. All right. Any other discussion? Sorry, who's second that? Mr. Commissioner McGarrity. Okay. What? <laughs> Just answering what You seconded it. Yeah, yeah, I did second yeah. it. Right, that's what Please I Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. This is a uh, Hall. Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Heilman? Mm -hmm. Yes. And Mr. Levy? Yes, Commissioner Marshall, you want to move up number 17? Yeah, they asked for a voice vote if we could change the agenda to move 17 up to now. Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Uh, Mr. President, I make a motion to adopt resolution number 1959-2014, accepting a land development plan for CVS Pharmacy, which has been filed to permit the development of the following properties within Hefford Township in conjunction with the development of a larger tract spanning both Haverford and Upper Darby Townships to permit development of approximately 15,900 square feet of commercial buildings and related site improvements. 1315 Northrop Road, Hafford Township, Delaware County, also known as DC Folio number 22-09-01843-00, zoned C3 General Commercial and R4 Residential District. 1315 Vermont Road, Hafford Township, Delaware County, also known as DC Folio number 22-09-00211-00, zone C3 commercial, general commercial. 1301 Vermont Road, Haverford Township, Delaware County, also known as part of DC Folio number 22-09-00210-00, zone C3 general commercial. All of the subject parcels within Haverford Township are located in the ninth ward. The aforesaid plans were prepared by Bowler Engineering of Chalfont, Pennsylvania, and said plans have been submitted before the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford for consideration in accordance with Pennsylvania Municipalities Planning Code <coughs> Act 247 as amended and pursuant to the Township <coughs> Subdivision and Land Development Regulations, Ordinance 1960, Chapter 160, Sections 4, A, and B. The recommendations and findings of the Planning Commission are hereby adapted and the Act 247 Plan Review Authority is ceded to the code provisions and control of Upper Darby Township subject to the conditions enumerated in the resolution. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Heilman? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Okay. Moving on. Back to number nine. <coughs> yeah. right. Number nine? Uh, Mr. President? Uh, motion to adopt the first <coughs> reading of ordinance number P16-2014, amending and supplementing the general laws of the Township of Haverford, Chapter 182 zoning, by reclassifying the zoning classification of certain properties known as Delaware County Folio Numbers. 22 22-02-0065-1-00. 22-02-0063-00. 22-02-0073-00. 22-02-0070800. 22-02-0070. 
and 22-02-00705-00 from the institutional district to R4 low to medium density residential district. Delaware County Folio number 22-02-00650-00 dash zero one from institutional district to outdoor recreational and open space district delaware county folio number 22 dash zero three dash zero zero two six four dash zero zero and 22 dash zero three dash zero zero two six five dash zero zero from institutional district to r4 residential district and Delaware County Folio Number 22-03-00958-10 from R5 Residential District to Outdoor Recreation and Open Space District. Second. Motion being seconded. Can you repeat everything after motion? <laughs> Missed. Uh, Lori, can you um, give us... Ably, you have to read it again. Some, uh, explanation here on what these properties are and... We don't need any explanation, aren't we? Uh, we uh, briefly, there are three separate sections of the um, zoning map that uh, we heard about at the hearing. Uh, the first is um, Exhibit D will be the Grimes Center in the property at 324 Campbell Avenue. They're presently located in the INS zoning district. Uh, the original proposal and the zoning um, ordinance, the map amendment ordinance, was to reclassify the property um, to R4. Actually, the initial discussion with the Planning Commission was to reclassify it to R6. The Planning Commission made a recommendation to classify it to the, the two properties to the R4 zoning district. Uh, subsequent to the vote by the Planning Commission, there were old maps that were researched and we found that those parcels had been the R6. I understand that there's some discussion now about <clears throat> whether or not there would be um, um, action on the R6 or the R4 and that the property owner, the adjoining, or one of the affected property owners was here and testified at the hearing in support of the R4. Okay. Uh, the, other part, the other group is um, in the Lanark area. Um, the properties include the former St. Andrew's Church, um, the Township Park, several residents along Lansdowne Avenue and um, on Landillo Road that are all grouped in the INS zoning district. We believe that that was a drafting error since <laughs> many of the homes on uh, Lansdowne Road were already in had been developed and in use as a residential property when we uh, created the INS zoning. Uh, so those properties would go to, primarily would be rezoned to R4, consistent with the zoning uh, in the rest of the neighborhood, and the township park would be rezoned to ROS. At this point, there is no um, recommendation for the uh, former Stratford Friends School, which is the Lanark school which was something that we had also discussed because it's no longer being occupied <coughs> for an but institutional use. The Lanark school is not part of this. The Lanark school is not part of this. It remains Correct. INS. Correct. So, um, so the, I mean, we've discussed this before. I've discussed with many times and with the neighbors that that was incorrectly and with now with the, it was a good time for us to do it because now the church is going to be residential. Correct. And so we wanted to make that residential also because it is residence now. So. Correct. And there may be an opportunity soon. I mean, this is just, you tell by the exhibit numbers, this is just part of an overall comprehensive uh, map update. The exhibit numbers kind of hop all over the place. Um, but we did start with an A. <laughs> we just are trying to break it down into um, manageable pieces, if you will. Um, and then the third um, is the township trail that extends from the YMCA to um, the Skadium property. Um, reclassifying the property from R5 district to the ROS Recreation and Open Space District. Mr. President. 
Mr. Holmes? President, I, I, I have a concern about this ordinance, and I have a question for our solicitor, and that's whether or not we can parse out any of these parcels from this ordinance, or do we just have to either pass this ordinance tonight or not pass this ordinance, because we have an issue that's been raised with regard to the advertising of one option and enough to make me want to table the whole thing unless the solicitor thinks that we can separate out the properties here. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, is, is there any, um, you know, um, need to go forward tonight on any one portion of it for any reason? If, if not, I mean, my suggestion would be to take the more careful route Okay. Uh, you know, yeah, to explain we'll so the, people understand yeah. what's going on. Well, how, how close are they to occupying the church? I mean, as a residence, is that still ways off, or is that the roof is being redone now? There are uh, custom windows, there's been uh, right. Know, I mean, I just wasn't sure because we'll have to do two readings and. And is there a problem? Yeah, but we as a township yeah, well, have to enforce okay. it. I don't I think know. anybody. I mean, we're fixing things that aren't by aren't by petition of individual owners, but things we've known have been a problem and basically are clerical problems as opposed to. This one's to, actually, and it's, this this one is. Uh, <coughs> it's institutional. It's institutional but now, but he's bought it and he's, he's making it a house. He's making it a residence. So it's one. So that's the only property that really is. Needs to be that that may is, have a time it. constraint yeah. on it, but I don't think it does. I think yeah. that we, we as have. I understand it, we, we don't have time constraints on these properties, and and I think the I think at least I know my advice would be, let's make sure we get it right because it, right, because I, it, there's, the zoning there's, right. Concern has been raised that the advertisement that was put out did not indicate all the different options that the commissioners could consider. In, in how to reclassify these ads, in particular whether uh, these individual sites, and whether they could be R4 or R6 um, or ROS. And for that reason, it's been recommended to us that we re-advertise and that we don't take action on this ordinance until that re-advertisement has been completed. Okay. Um, so I would suggest, and I move, that we table this ordinance and we table the entire ordinance, P16-2014. Well, okay. second it. Oh. Okay, now that it's been tabled, you need to vote. Okay. You need to vote yeah, on the table. You need to, vote, need on the to table. vote on whether to table it or not before mm -hmm. we go forward. Mm -hmm. So. No, I'm sorry, who's second at table? I did. Mr. DeVille. He's right. Well, there, there's an, actually another option. You could. There's no option now. We have to table it. We well, I can withdraw table. my table motion yeah. if, <clears throat> if, if right now, if, if right. Ms. Hanlon Widdop has something else to say. I think if there's before a. Before you say it. You need to withdraw the motion. motion and then I withdraw my motion. I'll okay. second. Go ahead. What? I think if, if there's a concern about the church and the occupancy of St. Andrews, that we would be able to move P16 forward right. and just amend it to remove the mm -hmm. two parcels on Campbell Avenue. Uh, yeah, that's the option. You can't table part of a motion. I checked that. Okay. So, right. so that's we not have to option. table. Yeah, it's not an option. To, no, you could. You could it. remove. You, you could amend, amend it. it. And for whatever par par parcels we wanted to do. Yeah, we could just remove it from this and we'll add the... Um, These are zoning map amendments. The yeah. one place where we can get hung up is if anybody does anything technically wrong. Correct. If we don't have any question, if we're not aware of right now any driving time problems, I would suggest that we table this yeah. entirely. I, yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with... If I'm, if I'm not out of line jumping in, I, I would agree. I mean, I, I really think you're right. I mean, and, and these kind of decisions with zoning map changes and, and ordinances can live with us for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you want to make sure we get it right with respect I will second to again. <coughs> move on. Wait, would you I so I renew my motion to move uh, to table oh, P16. I right. Sorry. I no, will second right. again. Okay, so please right. call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes to table. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Uh, Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarrity? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Number 10, ordinance, ordinance number P18-2014. Three. Uh, motion to adopt the second reading of ordinance number P18-2014, establishing and amending traffic restrictions on the following highways. Sticker parking only on the 2300 block of Belvedere Avenue, both sides from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., beginning 140 feet south of West Eagle Road and conclude at Ralston Avenue. Second. Motion made and seconded. Oh, there's two? Read all three sections. Pardon me? You have to read all three sections of that? Uh, there's just there's only one there's section. There's only one that I section that I see. 
Yeah, the next one, the next one is number 11. Yeah, that's animals. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? Uh, this is, I discussed this last, last month, and I think that unless there's any other new questions, it was explained in the minutes for last month. All right. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Connell? Okay. Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Hyman? Yes. Mr. Lee? Yes. Number 11. Okay, ordinance P19-2014, animals repellent, second reading. Motion to adopt the first reading of ordinance number P19-2014 by further amending and supplementing chapter 49, animals. This is the second reading. Can we have a second? Mm -hmm. Second, but it's all, it, I think it needs to be corrected. It says motion to adopt the first reading, but it's the second reading it's of this. second reading. Is it, is it the second yeah, reading? It is second reading. Second, second, second reading. Yeah. So you want yeah. to just... Okay, motion to adopt second reading. You accept the? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Motion made and seconded. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Heilman? Yes. And Mr. Oliva? Yes. Number 12, ordinance number P21-2014. Mr. President. Mr. Holmes. President, I move we adopt the second reading of ordinance number P21-2014, amending ordinance 160, adopted June 30, 1986, known as the general laws of the township of Haverford, further amending chapter 165, taxation. Second. 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 All right, motion made and seconded. Dan, seconded. Okay. It's a second reading. It purposes just to put the fine into, uh, uh, to confine it to civil fines and uh, to remove references to criminal citations in jail and things like that. We're doing a complimentary ordinance in another minute that handles it for purposes of the um, mercantile tax. Okay. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarry? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Lee? Yes. 13, orders number P22, 2014. Mr. President, I move we adopt the second reading of ordinance number P22 of 2014, amending ordinance number 160, adopted June 30, 1986, and known as the general laws of the township of Haverford, further amending chapter 165, <laughs> taxation. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any As I indicated, this is also a change, second reading, um, just uh, confining the fines under the mercantile tax system uh, to the civil arena and removing the criminal uh, elements to that. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarry? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Heilman? Yes. And Mr. Lee. Yes, number 14, P num <coughs> ordinance number P25-2014. Mr. President, Mr. motion Siegel. to adopt the first reading of ordinance number P25-2014, further amending and supplementing chapter four of the administration of government to establish 7 p.m. on the second Monday of each month as the regular time of the Board of Commissioners meeting of the township. Second. All right, motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I wasn't at the, uh, I apologize, I couldn't make the, uh, Work session. Work session. So why are we doing this? Can you, what do we talk about what the reason why we're doing this? I'll tell you why, because my concern is, I've looked this up and, and online, I Googled this, and a lot of municipalities went from 7 to 7.30 because of working parents that wanted to come to meetings <coughs> and with their families and picking them up from school or whatever functions they had, they had a difficult time getting to a seven o'clock meeting. So. I'm just curious as to why we're changing it. What was the overall reason to change it to seven? Well, I was I was not at that meeting, so. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot. I, I missed I that apologize. meeting. So, uh, Commissioner one, Siegel was the one who really brought it up. But yeah, we 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 when we set up the work sessions, part of the idea was to see how a seven o'clock meeting would work. Um, we've had no comments, or that to my knowledge, of anyone who had any difficulty. Uh, coming to those meetings uh, so that it, it seemed appropriate to consider moving the meetings up to seven. When I first came on the board, all the meetings were at eight, which seemed unreasonably to me late. Well, I agree with um, that. And, you know, I don't, I haven't heard anyone who's voiced any complaints about the seven o'clock time. And I've talked to a number of people because I, it's an issue that I, I, I 
think is earlier but, but, earlier is better for people rather than keeping them here till later hours the earlier you know and it's still a time after people can get home from work um, and the seven o'clock work sessions have worked without any hitch well I'm gonna concur with um, Commissioner D'Amelio the, the issues I had which I explained last time is that um, I think moving it up uh, is uh, sometimes we have the issues with executive sessions uh, and what have you. So, and people not being able to make that. Now, last, there are times when we're walking in here um, at a seven o'clock meeting and people are a few minutes late, what have you. And I can understand that. So, personally, um, I'd rather keep it to the 7 30 time as opposed to the seven o'clock. And I'll just point out what I did at the work session. Uh, this year, we've had seven regularly scheduled executive sessions. Four were an hour. Uh, the other three were half an hour or less in time. So it, it's not a, I don't think it's a significant issue in terms of the work sessions. Um, but, you know, that's for the board to decide. Well, work sessions tend uh, to be quicker than the, <laughs> right, than the regular meetings. And some of these regular meetings can, can go on for a while. Uh, for various reasons. I mean, we, we, you know, we debate issues and, and properly, you know, and the way we should. We have residents that more residents come to these meetings to speak up, as evident as uh, tonight's meeting. So I, I think it's, I mean, again, I looked this up, and there are a lot of residents, I mean, a lot of different municipalities that change their meeting back to 730. I, I agree, 8 o'clock was way too late. I think 730. It's right there. That's right where I think it needs to be. All the question. Any, any other? I, I, I think, I, I think it's an experiment worth taking. We're not talking about doing something we can't undo. Um, our, our executive sessions do not have to be before our regular meetings. Our executive sessions can be held any time that nine members of this board can pick up a phone and talk with the solicitor. Um, and, you know, so uh, confining them to just the half hour or the hour before our meetings, I think, is a mistake. And I think we, this will encourage us maybe to take advantage <coughs> of, um, of, to, of, of, of expanding the times that we could get together and talk in executive session. Um, we're also capable of communicating electronically with one another under the, you know, uh, under the satisfaction of the, the executive <coughs> session rules. Um, I, I would the the move from eight to seven thirty I think was a good one. I think the move from seven thirty to seven is one that we ought to try. And if we find that it is that that it is a problem, then I think we can we can deal with it. There's no action we can take here that we can't untake. Um, if we have to republish meetings after three meetings and we decide seven o'clock is a mistake, I think it's a mistake. But I I'm more concerned, Commissioner D'Amelio, with this board taking action at 11:30 at night than I am with um, the difficulties of getting here at seven. And oh, I've I certainly that, but those in my youth over, here, right? they I mean, are. But we've had know, a couple late meetings, and we've very known rare. that there are issues. Very rare. You know that bring you know even in our modern era, we've had issues that have brought people here till 12 o'clock at night. So. I, you know, we're televised. Our television, uh, televising is getting much better. It's getting broadcast more frequently. Um, I, I think it's an experiment worth taking. So I, I certainly do support the move. Okay. And then and I got to come from downtown. So it is, it's, it is a pain for me. <laughs> and, and sometimes we're late getting yeah. here for seven. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any but other? I'm late for 7.30 too, so. <laughs> <laughs> True. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Yeah, Mr. D'Amelio? No. Uh, Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Well, you know how I love to stay late here with Larry Holmes, so I'll vote no. All right. Mr. Connell? No. Uh, Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Heilman? Yes. And Mr. Oliva? Yes. You better be on time, Larry. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> Now, just so I understand straight, our first meeting is 7.30 and our second meeting is 7.30? Yeah, because well, the yeah, that's the next purposes. resolution. Okay. The, that's an ordinance, and since the ordinance won't be approved for a sec or presumably approved on a second reading till January, we couldn't change the January meeting okay. times. Okay. But the next resolution anticipates that and sets the time because we have to advertise our meetings a year in advance. So. Right. Okay, you want to take care of number 15? Sure. 
Uh, resolution number 1957 2014 motion to adopt this resolution approving public the public meeting schedule during the year 2015 as documented second okay motion made and seconded and this also accounts for the religious holidays and no sessions therefore no work session in September or November uh, as well so they're already accounted for within here. I think here. the, uh, do we do the high school graduation? Too? Yes. Yeah, it looks like Tuesday, the high school, June 9th. The there are graduation. three Tuesday meetings, June for the high school graduation, September um, because of uh, Rosh Hashanah, and October because of uh, Columbus Day, I believe. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah, cool. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holland? Yes. Mr. O'Leary? Yes. Number 16, resolution number 1958 2014. <coughs> Mr. Siegel? Yes. Um, motion to adopt resolution number 1958 2014, approving the final land development and minor subdivision plans for the Haverford Mr. Storage LLC for the property located at 629 Eagle Road, Haverford Township, Delaware County, and known as DC Folio, number 22-01-00366-00, which has been submitted to subdivide 2.563 acres into two lots and to develop 1.598 acres with a three-story, 62,400-square-foot self-storage building. The property is zoned LIN Light Industrial District and is located in the fourth ward. The plans were prepared by Herbert F. McCombie, Jr., uh, PE, Consulting Engineers and Surveyors, Inc. of Broomall, dated August 26, 20, 2014, and subject to compliance with the Planning Commission's recommendations. Second. One question. Dan, do you know if they... This uh, organization would have any extra room for parking for the Y? No, it's no. Uh, okay. no, no they, the people did ask me that question. So. No, of course, place. What do you think? It's, yeah. There's plenty of room. They want to pay for it. Yeah, there's. They're only ha get storage space. Get a storage bin. Yeah, pull your yeah. car in. Yeah. I don't think you're allowed to keep cars in, yeah. in those yeah. storage spots. No, no this they're, this they're, facility they're will not them, so. take cars. No, huh. right. and they they limited the number of parking spaces because they don't feel it's necessary. Uh, because people don't sort of come and visit their storage items, so mm -hmm. they're they're really <laughs> the parking is not going to be it's that's not going to help the why. Yeah. Or no, I just they asked me to ask, and I I, asked, I told them I'd ask. Just, uh, com <coughs> Commissioner D'Amelio. Good question. Will this affect? Uh, we talked about the why and the traffic. Will this affect any of the traffic? I mean, was there a traffic study? Not anti it's not anticipated to the owners. Uh, anticipate uh, probably 10 cars a day at most because people come drop their stuff off and then don't come back um, this is also designed to be only with internal access so it can't be used as for example the one across from Kohl's with the storage doors where businesses can store and pull up pickup trucks or work trucks it's not designed for that so you won't have the commercial traffic according to the uh, owners so it should have literally no impact on traffic they're also unifying the uh, travel lane uh, that goes behind um, the, the Swiss farm there so that there'll be one exit there'll be no left turn onto Lawrence Road uh, which will help ad address that bottleneck and the connection road is not going to be straight so it won't be able to be used <coughs> as a cut through from Hillcrest to Lawrence but was there an official traffic study? they did one yes and and the owners also discussed their prior experience because they own the facility on Westchester Pike and a number of others yeah, I mean, it's just my concern with the yeah. traffic is that why it's killing the old road. They, they yeah. own the facility on Westchester Pike, excuse me? They own public storage. Yeah, they own a few of them. I believe it's well, the one. They own that one, too? Yeah. The one they call? Nobody, nobody passes a New Year's resolution to go to the storage center more often, all right? But they do with the Y. I mean, it's just right. not going to get any but, impulse um, traffic. You get this stuff a month at a just, time. Listen, I'm just... Yeah. yeah. No, because I'd, like I'd like to talk to them about the public storage. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to have a little chat okay. when they have a minute. Okay. <laughs> But uh, oh, that does sound. But the um, sounds you coming. Mm. Now that's that's my understanding of it. Um, I didn't know they owned the same. I they own. They, I think that's the one they own. <coughs> I know that. No, we don't. You don't? Oh, I'm no? sorry. Oh. Yeah, that's a, oh. that's a different, oh. different company from the planning commission. Yeah. <coughs> okay, I'm sorry. I misspoke. Yeah. Good thing he was here. Yes. Yeah. All right. Set the record so, straight. Yes. So I'm so I'm not going to crucify. I've been accused you. of being wrong earlier. Good. All right. 
He just right. don't want to be taken out to the woodshed. Well, if the commissioner's mm -hmm. for it, then. All right. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio. Yes. Mrs. Hall. Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Mr. McGarry. Yes. Mr. Connell. Yes. Uh, Mr. Wexler. Yes. Mr. Heilman. Yes. Mr. Yes. Number 18. Purchase. Public yes, uh, Mr. Com uh, Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the purchase of one 2015 Ford F550 4x4 with Altec model AT40-G telesepic and articulating aerial ISO boom from Altec Pennsylvania Service Center, Plains PA, PA under PA co-stars. What's it? It's telescopic. Telescopic. It's just oh. a typo. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at going. What's like that? Like Telescopic. Okay. Figure out what telus. Yeah, I was trying to figure it out too, but uh, under PA co-stars contract zero two five dash zero nine one in the amount of ninety six thousand eight ninety three ten. Second. Motion made and seconded. Please call the roll. <laughs> uh, Mr. D. Milio. Yes. Mrs. Hall. Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Tight. Mr. Holmes. Time. Yes. Mr. McGarry. Yes. Thanks. Mr. Connell. Yes. Mr. Wexler. Yes. Mr. Holland. Yes, for the telesepic. Yeah. And Mr. Liu. Yes. Um, and number 19, continuation of Citizens Forum for non-agenda items. Start on this side. Anyone? Okay. Thank you. This side. Anyone? Quiet. That's good. Okay. <laughs> we might be oh, home by my. 11. <laughs> All right. Anyone? Oh, my. <clears throat> New business. Anyone? Mr. President? Commissioner. Yes. Um, I'd like to bring up, um, um, let me, I'll make the motion, then I can explain the basis for it. Um, I would like to uh, make a motion um, that um, we hold, I don't know how you want to frame this, um, for a curative amendment to our zoning <laughs> ordinance. Um, under Section 609.2 of the Municipal Planning Code, uh, so that uh, addressing the decision today of the Commonwealth Court relating to the billboards. Um, so I know the. Let me just see how we can, you know, that we would hold um, that in accordance with six, Section 609.2 of the Municipal Planning Code, um, we would have to prepare a curative amendment to our zoning code based on the Commonwealth Court, so I would like to take the appropriate action to set that in motion. And I don't know Mr. Burns. Hey, could, could I jump in a little bit on that? Do, right. do you mind? Uh, uh, yeah, the, we, we did get a decision today in a billboard case, and just to make it, uh, if I could just take the liberty of giving everybody a, a real brief overview on what the, what the court I'm said. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but this includes the ones, the other the other ones on Westchester Pike, so it yes. all mm -hmm. of them. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Not, not the most recent one. This is the first set: the Westchester five. Pike and this Lancaster. Is the five, yeah. Lancaster. The three on Lancaster, oh. three on okay, Westchester, so and the two on Lancaster. By the Pep Boys and the one at the. Well, I, I mean, what we do ultimately could, but but this the the case that was decided, the Commonwealth Court decided the what we would call we'll call I'll call the first billboard case. You remember the zoning hearing board found that our ordinance was. Uh, valid and that the sites for these billboards were inappropriate. The uh, Court of Common Pleas um, affirmed the Zoning Hearing Board uh, and also found that the sites were inappropriate. The Commonwealth Court, um, likewise, uh, in, an in an opinion issued today, uh, affirmed both the Zoning Hearing Board and the Trial Court uh, insofar as saying that um, the billboards at uh, the heights uh, proposed and the locations uh, suggested um, were um, inappropriate as well. The Commonwealth Court, however, also went on to say that they weren't convinced that there wasn't any place um, on the record presented, that there wasn't any place in Haverford that um, would, would be inappropriate, I mean, up, appropriate for billboards, and therefore um, they um, found that our ordinance to that extent uh, was invalid. And what I think Commissioner Siegel wants me to, to do here is to take a look at it, because under sec Section 6092, if there's a question as to whether there's any part of our ordinance being invalid, um, there is a, a provision in the MPC at Section 6092 that says you, you 
bring that issue up and then we take a look at it and then within 30 days we come back and do a resolution as to whether um, we believe it's invalid and then if we do believe it's invalid then we have um, six more months after that period of time to um, to rewrite the ordinance that we determine is invalid so yeah I think what we're trying to do today is get the ball rolling on that correct thank you okay, so so what do you I, I need a second second okay thank you. Do you want to yeah, I mean that's what, essentially are we, we are authorizing. Uh, we have to. We have 30 days to determine whether we need to have a curative amendment uh, to our zoning code. Particularly, I think it's section 182.701, dealing with sign regulations relating to the billboards. <laughs> um, 30 days to get a report back to us from our solicitor as to whether or not we should do this. We would have to make a resolution within right. 30 days that we feel we have to do this, and then we have six months within which to enact the amendment to the uh, zoning code. Um, I believe it also impacts pending action. I think it would stay any other challenges. Any new challenges, yes. Correct. Not any that are, are actually already in, but any, any so, new ones. Mr. Byrne, well, 30 what? days. Can we resolve anything in less than 30 days? 30 days is just that. Uh, we'll make a resolution. It'll be our, we'll, we'll address it at our January meeting. Yeah. 30 days just give, can. It's, it is more than 30 days from it now. It is more yeah. than 30 days from now. It definitely is. It's the 12th. Well, well, we could do it at the reorganization Let's meeting. Do we? Okay. If we need to. If, if, yeah. we need to, if we need to read a resolution, we could do that at our. Uh, at our um, that. What um, I thought the third district had come out with a ruling for uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware that said you could ban billboards. Well, you're, totally. You're, 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 um, there was a there was a ruling, but there was different issues involved. That 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 was not the same exact issues as this. It was different case, different court. Um, so you got that case got into some some well, federal that, issues. Isn't that above? Where we uh, are right depends. now? No, not really. I mean, it, they're, they're different systems. You know, we have two systems um, in in United States. You know, we right. have a federal system, and we have a um, and we have a and we have a state system. Right. You know, in state but if system, it went the, beyond the state, the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, where would we go to? Where would we appeal to? You would go to the you would only you wouldn't go anywhere actually, unless you were able it, to get some kind of federal issue involved or some kind of question that was that the that. The so United States. So the fact that that federally they say you can ban them in these three states, it doesn't matter for us. Yeah. Well, that's a wait, I mean, I'll, I mean, I'll it's just it, <laughs> three lawyers will I mean, keep you here till it, eleven. It, we will be if he does. Why don't one of the two of you do it? Let's let Jim answer. Let's let the solicitor though. Let's let the question. solicitor. Yeah. Go ahead, Jim. It, it, if. Right, the, the issues that we have before us now are, are state issues, okay? We had, a, we had a zoning hearing board that was appealed to the state zoning trial court and then appealed to the state um, commonwealth court. Right. So the issues that, that, were, that are being pursued by BIG are all state issues. And therefore, there is no federal ruling. Like in, in some of those other cases that you're talking about, there were some other federal issues, including like um, freedom of speech and those type of issues that got the thing rolling in the federal court system. You know, and, and then there were, you know, there's some ancillary issues that when you have a federal action going, there can be some ancillary issues that are answered. But one federal court, uh, you know, like a district court or a circuit court can't make a rule that's going to affect the state courts. Um, if the United States Supreme Court made a ruling, then that might have some kind of effect, but that it, then again, it would depend on the question that was there. So, so you, you mean you're right? There was some rule. There were some very good rulings in the federal court system, um, and there's been some good rulings in the in the state court systems too. But unfortunately, um, and I respect the decision of the court. I'm not, you know, throwing down on the decision of the court, but. Unfortunately, in this one, or at least on this particular issue, it didn't go our way, and we have to take a look at it to see what our next steps are. I think the first step is um, what Mr. Or what, yeah, what Mr. Uh, Siegel had uh, suggested is to um, have me uh, take a look at it under Section 609.2 uh, to determine what my thoughts are and to report back to you so that if we um, 
want to do a resolution in January, we can do it and still have the protections of Section 609 in the event that anybody else were to file um, an additional application during this time period. And that doesn't mean we can't, uh, that precludes our ability to, to pursue what other, uh, other options we want to pursue in the state system in terms of trying to ask for reconsideration or, um, or a um, request for um, appeal. appeal to the Supreme Court. Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Okay. Okay. Mr. Hall, you look like you have a question. No, I, I just wanted to clarify what you just said. So if we change the ordinance that we currently have, then we have the ability to go back to the court with what we have in front of them currently. Is that correct? No, we're not going to, we're not going to go back to the court with that. Now, the issue before the court is an issue that's already been decided. Right. And, uh, so that, that issue is gone. But what we want to take a look at now is that, you know, whether we want to change. You know, a lot of these ordinances were written years and years and years and years ago, you know, and so the laws have changed over the years. So we're going to take a look the at the ordinance. But it doesn't affect anything that's currently right. in front not of the Not currently okay. pending, right. Just one, I just wanted to be clear. And, and to clarify, I'm going to be making a second motion that will uh, ask the board to approve allowing Mr. Byrne to review the Commonwealth Court decision, determine um, and take appropriate action, which could either be a petition for reconsideration with the okay. court or what's called a petition for aliquot or allowance of appeal to determine and whether this, we could ask the Pennsylvania Supreme Court to hear the case. The latter is unlikely because they remanded the case for further action, but I would leave that to Mr. Burns okay. uh, determination, but that would be my second motion after we address this one. All right. Well, let's stay on the one motion, okay. but I want people to know because <clears throat> right. that's exactly. right. They that's sort of go together. Right. And since it's new business, I think it's helpful for people to understand that. Okay. Thank okay. you, Dan. Any other? All right. Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio. Yes. Mrs. Hall. Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Mr. McGarry. Yes. Mr. Connell. Yes. Mr. Wexler. Yes. Mr. Heilman. Yes. Mr. Lieb. Yes. Go ahead. Mr. President, um, I'd make a second motion to authorize the solicitor to review the decision of the Commonwealth Court and to uh, report back to the board, but in the meantime, authorize him as he deems appropriate, either to file a petition for reconsideration with the Commonwealth Court or a petition for aliquot with the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, um, because those would be hand, those have to be done before we would be officially meeting again. Okay. Second. Second. All right. Any other discussion? Please call the roll. Mr. D'Amelio. Yes. Mrs. Hall? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarry? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Holman? Yes. Mr. O'Leary? Yes. Any other new business? Okay. Other business? Commissioner Camilio. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, Westgate Hill Civic Association is having a Santa visit on Sunday, December 14th at 3 p.m. Uh, there's going to be a story time with hot chocolate and carol singing. And uh, first time ever Westgate Park tree lighting will, will occur. So that's Sunday, December 14th at 3 p.m. Um, I want to thank all of our servicemen and women serving throughout the uh, world uh, during this holiday season to wish them well, um, especially for the fear of what's going to happen in the next 24 to 48 hours with the CIA report on uh, on torture and there's a heightened alert all over the world so I hope that that goes um, without any any problems but we're thinking of you I also want to thank our police our fire our EMTs and our paramedics especially the police they have a very difficult job uh, actually throughout the whole country right now with what's going on uh, certainly any loss of life is is a tragic loss and uh, and I know that uh, here in Haverford Township, uh, the chief has been very aggressive in ordering, uh, I think, the cameras, chief. Uh, we, are, we are one police department is doing that. We're uh, researching that right now. Okay. So I know you mentioned that at least, what, a month ago? You, you already were on top of that, and I appreciate that. 
Uh, I also want to thank our public employees, our public works uh, employees especially. Yeah, um, so. The winter season's coming, and they do a fantastic job of clearing the streets. And uh, we're home uh, nice and warm, and they're out there, God knows how many hours, getting those streets cleared. And every everywhere I go, people marvel yeah. at how great yeah, yeah. our streets are when they drive into Haverford, how clear they are, where they go into just one township over in the other direction. And there's some issues there. So uh, I want to thank them and wish them well in this next month. Who knows? We can get a snowstorm. Uh, and just happy holidays to everyone. Enjoy the holidays with your family and your friends. And have a safe, uh, a safe holiday as well. Thank you. Mr. President? Commissioner Hall. Uh, I would like to take a moment to thank Jan Marie uh, Rushforth, who is, will be stepping down from the Environmental Advisory Committee. Uh, as you know, I've been the liaison for the Board of Commissioners for the past three years and have worked with Jan and an outstanding committee. And I think that she's not only been fabulous for the Environmental Advisory Committee, but as all of us know, she's a great citizen and community leader and has been dedicated for many, many years to the township. I don't doubt that she'll continue in some fashion, but I'd like to thank her for everything that she's done, her time, her incredible uh, responsible, the way she's so responsible for everything that happens environmentally in this community. She takes it on and tries to look at it with an intellectual eye and a thought forward thinking in every direction. So I'd like to thank her for her time and she will be at the CREC on Wednesday night for a little party if anybody would like to stop by at 7.30. And also I'd like to wish everyone a happy holiday season, safe and happy and enjoy your families. All right, Commissioner Siegel. Um, I, I just want one, I think it's a personal note that I would, it would be echoed from everyone in the room. Uh, offering condolences to Commissioner Heilman on the passing of his father, John Francis Heilman Jr. Um, and you know, our thoughts are with you. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Commissioner Holmes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to take advantage and wish everybody a very uh, happy holiday season and uh, happy and healthy new year. That's all I have. Um, I would like to thank everybody for the uh, outpouring of support. Uh, the township was incredible. I mean, I think everybody who I know who works for the township was at the viewing or funeral. Uh, it was incredible. Thank you. Um, uh, donations, if anybody would like to send them, go to two township uh, um, charities. The Kevin Kane Foundation, which helps... Uh, patients, families uh, who have cancer and they have a hard time paying their bills. So it was a great charity. And the other one is the Billy Lake, which uh, Billy Lake was a family member also, and uh, he died from ALS. And uh, uh, the Billy Lake Foundation does an incredible job raising money for ALS. And uh, it's Connor Quinn and his crew involved with both Kevin Kane and the uh, Billy Lake. So. If anybody would like to send a donations, uh, you can look them up. I don't have the addresses, but uh, Commissioner Holmes gave me his here. So um, thank you very much for everything. Uh, Coopertown is going to be having uh, their uh, uh, Santa visit. Oh, I do have them. Hang on. Let's go back. <laughs> I do have them. Uh, donations can be sent to the Kevin King Memorial Fund, P.O. Box 536, Havertown, PA, 19083 or the Billy Lake Memorial ALS Research Fund, 4 East Mercer Avenue, Havertown, PA, 19083. So that's where the donations can go. Um, Tuesday, December 23rd, uh, Coopertown's having their uh, visit with Santa and Oakmont Fire Company. And on Tuesday, December 30th, uh, we're having our luminary and carriage rides. Uh, it's a beautiful night in Coopertown. Just about everybody does, and I suggest everybody try to drive through. We have uh, horse-drawn carriages and a trolley that take everybody through, and there's caroling, and it uh, really looks beautiful. So um, hopefully everybody can stop by. Thank you. Commissioner McGarrity. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, the, uh, this Friday uh, at the Brookline Firehouse, uh, thanks to Mr. Viola and his crew for helping out, too, we're going to have Toys for Tots, and Santa Claus will be down there at 6.30 p.m. So... Uh, yeah, and Santa Claus, if anybody is interested, 
is right here on this board, but I'm not going to tell who it is, but it's not me. Yes, <laughs> okay. Oh, but, no, I blew that one, yeah. But <laughs> uh, these kids should be in bed by now. That's <laughs> Uh, I want to thank uh, Kenny Richardson, Al D. Felice, and Bob Davis for their help in making Brookline Boulevard uh, and look beautiful down there for the uh, for the holiday seasons. And uh, also, uh, this not only this weekend, but every weekend in December, the trains are at the Grange. And uh, that's a very nice uh, place to take your children to look at the trains. They have a wonderful display that Mr. Parkinson puts on down there. And it's free for the kids unless you want to make a donation, a dollar or two. But uh, it's a good, uh, very nice display that they have down there. And the kids will love it. And they'll ask you to take them back year after year. This year they have a two-level on the uh, train sets. So uh, that's all I have for now. I just want to say that the... Real Santa Claus is going to be out there this Sunday in the Lanark Fire District um, okay. visiting everybody for giving out candy canes. But um, I want to thank uh, this end, end of the year, the township uh, personnel for um, everything they do for the township. And I greatly appreciate a lot of the, the residents in the community that step up and on all our boards and even the ones that aren't on the boards, our community people the neighbors who are so involved, they take a passion in their neighborhood and they come to uh, these meetings and they, they present themselves with issues and, uh, and your commissioners do hear you. And although things may turn out one way or, or another way, some people are happy, some people aren't, whatever the case may be, every commissioner here greatly appreciates your, your input. And, and I hope this community, um, I, I know they will continue to do that, but I just want to let you know that we greatly, I greatly also appreciate everything that the residents do uh, for Haverford Township. And uh, that being said, just have a safe holiday and drive carefully out there, please. Commissioner Wexler? I'd also like to echo uh, sentiments for former Commissioner Rushforth for a job well done on the EAC. Uh, she's been tireless. I got to work with her in the development of the CREC on the planning committee for a couple of years, and she is one bundle of energy, to say the least, and good luck to her. Uh, also, thank you to the LEAF crew. Uh, all hands have been on deck, and we, it's just amazing. You drive down our streets and what they're doing, and rain or shine, they're picking them up, and our streets, as Mr. D'Amelio said, look phenomenal. Not only snow, but also the leaves. So please don't forget them and tip your hands to them, tip your hats to them as you, as you drive by. And then please, happy holidays and safe travel to everyone. Okay. Larry? Yeah, I just wanted to make a comment to the board. Um, earlier this evening, uh, you heard from Citizens Forum regarding a, a, a comment regarding the EMS. I can tell you it's been a little over a month, month and maybe a few days since we uh, initiated or amended our agreement with the Hospital University of Pennsylvania that we started back in, I believe, 2002. Everything's, um, other than a couple of little minor pumps in the road, everything is going well. I will make sure that, uh, that this board, um, if you haven't received it, you'll continue to receive <coughs> monthly reports. Patients are going to the closest appropriate hospital. They are um, Bryn Mawr, Blankenel, Delaware County, and the patients that go to Penn are trauma-related or divert it down there from one of those hospitals. So any of the uh, uh, comments you may see are incorrect. Okay, but again, most importantly, you will, everyone from this board will receive monthly reports. If you don't, I'll make sure uh, that's addressed. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Siegel, you had something about Toys for Tots? Yeah, just a reminder, the Toys for Tots drive will end this Thursday. All the bins will be collected on Friday, so please go out and uh, fill those bins. Uh, there's various locations throughout the township, and thanks to everyone who already has. Right. <clears throat> I just had a couple things. Um, Kelly Music Service for Life uh, presents a fun night of dancing and socializing to benefit the friends of the Heifer Trails um, at the beautiful Creck. Uh, facility up at the Hafford Reserve, and um, that is um, Saturday, uh, January 17th, uh, between 7 and 11. Uh, you can get your tickets at um, <coughs> HaffordTownship.org, and they are $40 in advance and 50 at the door. Um, also, I do want to offer my condolences to, to Jeff's father, uh, Jeff's family, uh, for the passing of his father. Um, also, 
uh, one of our own here, um, uh, Deborah Gove, who uh, oh, yeah. Bob, Bob, who works for the township now and has been involved with the fire co Lanark Fire Company for decades. Uh, his wife passed, and I want to offer condolences to the Gove family um, for for that passing. With that, I will I will uh, entertain a motion. So moved. 